How's it going everyone? This video is my Resident Evil 4 Remake Professional Mode No Damage Run. Throughout this run I'll be going for the S Plus rank without using bonus items, without using any glitches, I'll be using none of the bonus weapons, so that means no infinite ammo, none of that stuff, none of the cosmetics like the armor or the stuff Leon can use to get an advantage, all while trying to take no hits. Thank you very much for tuning into the video. If you want to show some support to me, just leave a like and maybe a comment, subscribe if you're new here. And if you want to go a step further than that, you can always follow me over on my live stream where I put runs like this together at twitch.tv slash iframes. You can find that link in the comment section below this video in the pinned comment. Again, thank you for watching the video. Let's get this going. All right, so let's go ahead and skip these cutscenes. Chapter one then, the very beginning. So for those of you who are trying to follow this for a guide, obviously you don't have to do no damage. It was just a challenge I wanted to set myself. The challenge here is really getting S plus and not taking any damage. So that pretty much means I'm allowed 15 saves throughout the run and I've got to beat it in under five and a half hours. So we finished uh, on just under four hours. I think it ended up being three hours 55 or something like that. There's definitely a lot more faster strats you can take in this run. The beginning here, we're just grabbing up the key and going down into the basement. All of this stuff is really straightforward. If you've taken a look at my other professional guide, this one is faster. Um, but one thing to bear in mind if you're just trying to get the S plus is where you're going to save. And you might not want to use the same save points as me, but I'll talk about points that you'll probably want to save at. At the beginning here, if you run into this wall for a second and wait for that guy to lunge at you, you can just run past him nice and easy. I get a little bit more risky at the beginning of chapters or my save points, just because obviously if I mess up, I can just restart. Especially this early on in the run. We're going to grab that green herb from the cabinet there. One thing you've got to be wary of is where you use heals. Obviously, I am not using heals throughout this run, but you will see me picking them up because I can sell them to the merchant for easy money. Although I do have extra heals throughout this run um, that I don't sell to the merchant. One thing that's worth a lot to sell is the combined herbs, the yellow, green, and red ones. Selling those is worth 10,000, especially in the early game. It's really useful to sell those to the merchant for a little bit of extra money. Uh, if you do end up using them, just bear in mind that you're going to have a little bit less money than me. Although by the end of the run, I have a lot more money than we need. But specifically in the early game, it's really important to try and keep up with the money situation because upgrading your guns and stuff... Um, in certain places is definitely necessary so you can run past these enemies if you want to but because i know that people will be trying to follow along with me and getting the s plus for themselves i just take my time here and kill these guys it's not too difficult just hit your shots this one will usually mutate this last guy will turn into a plagus and you just want to stab him before that happens the reason i'm kidding these guys though is because i want to get into this hut look out for the bear trap right there you want to go into this hut, and there's a guy guarding it. So you can't just run in here, because he'll more than likely swing and hit you. You can pull off some fancy moves and get around him. But uh, it's a little bit risky. There's a red herb in here, a flashbang that we want. And some handgun ammo as well. Like I said, there's a strategy to run in there and just quickly turn around and run out. But it's kind of hard to copy. So I didn't want to use that strategy. And that kind of goes for a lot of stuff in this run. I, even though this is more of something that I guess would just be fun to watch because it's no damage. I kind of wanted to make something that people could copy if they wanted to. So running into the village, we can get this green herb that's on the left. And there's also a box here we can smash for a little bit of loot and get rid of this enemy. So at this point, we haven't been spotted. And the way the village works is from the time you get spotted, you have to survive for five minutes. But I'm running in between the houses there and just getting straight in this house because I want to get the shotgun. Don't worry about the loot just yet. We can get that when we finish the village. We just want to focus on kind of surviving for now. So grab up the shotgun and also the shells that are on the bed next to us. 
That looked definitely really strange. Be careful of anyone climbing up that ladder. I got lucky and he got popped out of the ladder, but if he does make it in, just shotgun him. So the strategy here for us is to just try and survive for a while without getting hit, obviously. There is a strategy you can use with grenades. It's more of a speedrun strategy, though, and it's kind of difficult to pull off. So I didn't want to include it in this guide. I will be making another guide type deal that includes it if that's something you're interested in. I'll try to link it around if you want to watch that one, too. Um, but all we're going to do is run around the village, run back over to those houses and just avoid enemies. If anyone comes close to us, we got the shotgun, we got those extra shells, and we can just push them back with the shotgun. That's kind of the the way we want to do things here. Just be careful. Sort of wait it out if loads of enemies are coming up behind you. Buy yourself a little bit of time. Stay away. Don't get grabbed or hit. If you are getting hit a bunch in this area, it's a good idea to just restart, because all the valuables in the beginning of the game are really, really valuable. Like, anything you pick up that you can sell is definitely very useful. You may have seen me grab that velvet blue that was on top of that roof. It's always on that roof. So I tried to grab that really early on when I'm up in this area. And I'm just kind of working between the ladders, kicking ladders down, avoiding enemies. In order to trigger the church bell, you need to kill 15 enemies. And what the speedrunners will do is there's two grenades in this area and they'll get the grenades and they use a certain strategy to get enemies to clump up and try and get the 15 kills um, with the two grenades. And it's definitely possible to do that, but it's also really tricky to get. And I just don't want it to be a situation where if anyone is trying to copy this, uh, they're going to really struggle to do so. You know, This is a strategy you can just use yourself if you want. It takes a little bit longer, like I said, this adds like a good few minutes to your time, but there's plenty of time throughout this run. If you want something that's a little more casual to follow, I have done another run that was longer than this one, it's about 5 hours, but uh, it wasn't no damage, it was just kind of showing how to get through professional. If you want to check that out again, I'll link it around for you. Uh, but this one definitely took a lot of time to put together, getting the time down by another hour from my previous run was difficult enough, but... One thing I really do in this run is make sure that I'm getting way more resources than I need. Just so that for anyone who is following, you've got plenty to work with. Ammo-wise, money-wise, all of that stuff. Because a lot of the resources in this game are random. If you smash crates and whatnot, I could get some ammo and you may get money out of it. So there's no guarantee that you're always going to have the same stuff as me. But by sort of looting as much stuff as I can... For the most part of this run, you'll end up with more resources than you need. So, that's what we're going to try and do throughout this run. Which is kind of why it takes me a lot longer to get through this run, just because I'm gathering up so much stuff all the time. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to have tons of ammo and resources throughout the run. It just makes sense. So right here, I, I just like to use this roof, knock down the ladders, stop these guys from climbing up. Um, if you want to try for the 15 kills, be my guest, but... Uh, you'll more than likely find that you've got to do it with grenades. You won't have the ammo to kill 15 enemies, and you kind of want to do it before the chainsaw guy shows up as well, because him just harassing you makes things so much more difficult. But this is very intense. This is one of the few times in the game that things are on a timer, and you just kind of need to survive, basically. I've only got two shotgun shells left, so I'm just trying to wait out this time i'm pretty sure it's nearly over when we're finished with the villagers we can loot up a little bit if we want to and go and find whatever's lying around there is some definite pickups in this area where the loot will always be the same but a lot of the stuff again is random and you can't guarantee what you're gonna get there is some healing items in the building next to us there's the one building that we don't want to run into and i'm pretty sure it's the building i'm on top of right now because there's an enemy you may go in there thinking you're safe but there's an enemy that's hiding in a wardrobe and he jumps out of it but there we go quick nod from me so after the village was where i made my first save um but if you're just trying to get the S plus and just trying to make it through professional, obviously this was a difficult section for me to do, so I just wanted to get it saved and done with. But after that, I didn't save again till the end of chapter two. I would recommend making your first save at the end of chapter two. If you can push it to the end of chapter three, like I mentioned before, 
feel free to use a couple of heals. Don't overdo it with the heals. If you feel like you're getting damaged a lot and you're shredding through your heals, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you have a lot less money than me because I use the heals just to sell to the merchant. It's definitely a big part of getting the money we need for upgrades and stuff, specifically the yellow herbs. The yellow herbs are super important, not so much in the later game, but definitely in the earlier game. It, they're really, really important just to get extra money. So bear that in mind. It's okay if you use maybe one or two, but I don't use any in this run. I sell them all because they're worth a ton of money. One thing you probably could get away with using is just singular green herbs and uh, first aid sprays. Although again, the first aid sprays are worth 5,000 a piece with the merchant. So it's just a good idea to go ahead and sell them up to him. I'm just gathering up a few green herbs here. We will have more herbs than uh, yellow herbs. We'll, we'll get random green herbs that will just sit in my inventory, pretty much. And I don't ever, I don't really sell just the singular green herbs when they're on their own. Um, crafting up some more shotgun shells here definitely very, very important to have in the early game. Just being able to push enemies back when they're in your way is just so valuable. You don't really need to kill everyone make sure you grab the ruby that's in here the two treasures that are in the village at the beginning are that velvet blue that's on top of the one house and that ruby and again getting treasures throughout the run so we can sell stuff to just make money is just super important so bear that in mind throughout the run all right <clears throat> gunpowder so there's my first save that was where i saved it but i would recommend like i said if you're trying to just get the s plus Wait until at least the end of chapter 2 to make your first save. Maybe even chapter 3 if you can push it. And that might mean that you're really struggling to get that far without saving. But um, if you are using heals and you just sort of follow along with me and what I'm doing, you should be fine to get that far. Chapter 2 really isn't that difficult. You may take a hit or two. Um, but yeah, you should have enough green herbs just to heal yourself a little bit if you need to. Right here, I'm just gathering up. Whatever I can, I just stab that one villager so we could get the pearl pendant. And there is a shortcut you can take here, but it alerts another enemy. So I just like to go this way. It's a little bit safer. And not as fast, but definitely safe. So we're going to come in here. We can disarm this trap. And come around. Grab up the yellow herb. So that's our first one. One thing I probably mentioned in the intro, but I'm going to repeat probably a couple of times throughout this run, is this run doesn't include any glitches or any bonus items. I'm not using any of the armor or the bonus weapons, any of that. It's all done as if it was a new game. Don't have any unlocks, that kind of thing. <clears throat> I really wanted to make this run difficult for me, to be honest. Although if you're going for the S+, Plus, you can use the armor. I'm pretty sure you can use the infinite ammo weapons if you want to, but... <clears throat> I think you'll luck yourself out of a challenge if you do that. Right, so I'm grabbing the cog, make sure you grab that ruby out of the drawer, climb up the ladder, and we'll just loot up here. There's a couple of boxes to smash. Try to grab all the loot that I do. If you are following along, maybe chapter to chapter, just remember what I grab. And, you know, it's fair to say that each chapter might take you a couple of attempts. I, I like to work chapter to chapter because I think it's more entertaining in a no damage sense just working through the chapters that way. But yeah, it's, it's up to you where you save it. Just bear in mind you've only got 15 and there are some sections later in the game that are really difficult and some chapters that are really long. So it may be more beneficial to save mid-chapter for you. Um, but yeah, that's entirely up to you. I just, again, wanted to have the challenge of doing each chapter sort of no damage i think the only the only time i saved mid chapter was after the village just because that was a massive nuisance to get through so i ended up pretty much having a bigger challenge here i had to get through the the rest of chapter one and chapter two um before my next save but if you do one save per chapter you're going to end up with 15 saves exactly so that's pretty much what we were working for here. But it's a really good idea to, like I mentioned a couple of times already, just not save it until around, ch I'd say, chapter 3. If you can push it to chapter 3, do that, and then you're going to be really comfortable when it comes to saves. 
and before like boss fights and stuff you can save it and if you're doing a boss fight you take a bunch of extra damage you can uh <clears throat> just quit the game load your save um when we come into the little village here we want to crouch under this trap and grab the stuff that's in these boxes there's some resources there and if we go back under one of the enemies will follow you in and walk into the trap which is kind of nice look out for this bear trap and we're going to run through here around to the right watch out for that bear trap this enemy will usually throw an axe you can kind of determine enemy's behavior if they throw an axe they kind of won't rush you after that they'll just pull out another axe and that gives you a good few seconds to try and run past them this enemy will usually charge you be ready to shoot him if you're not as confident with the pistol, you can always hit him with the uh, shotgun. And then we're just going to open up this area by stabbing the padlock and coming in. Loot up the cupboards and heal. Disarm, disarm the bomb there and come on in. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Enemy positioning can be a little bit random, but for the most part, it's usually the same. As what you'll see me get in here. Alright. So, stab this guy to get rid of him, nice and easy. When you come into this room, you shouldn't really have to worry about enemies coming in. They'll leave you alone once you get in here. So, you may find yourself in a situation where you run into an area with a bunch of enemies. But it's just more beneficial just to run past them. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you want to fight them. But, uh, most of the time, you want to try just to run past enemies and avoid fighting them, to be fair. Alright. So, I didn't save it here, I kept going... And I didn't want to make my next save until I reached the end of chapter 2. Whereas if, if I didn't really care about taking damage, I'd probably push it to about chapter 3 before I saved. Right. Yeah, because just getting upgrades early on is so important when it comes to like weapons and getting certain things. Basically by chapter 4, we want to have enough to upgrade our sniper rifle a bunch and obviously we've got to buy it i do buy some extra things that you may be able to skip buying but uh, that's entirely up to you all right so we're gonna take out this trap here open this barrel there's a knife in it for us we're gonna run past the first guy if we crouch down and stick to the left in this area we can stab this guy in the back if he does notice you just run past him and go to the place where you've got to open the door and he won't follow you into this room but you just bear in mind if you don't kill him like i did you're gonna have to run back past him which can be tricky on this difficulty he can hit you in the back as you try and jump over and you've got to take this path really really tight so that you can make it back to the door before it closes it shuts a lot faster on this difficulty so just bear in mind you're gonna have to run past these guys and get around them um get all your loot back grab everything out of there and we can head off on our way so the merchant is here i'm not sure if i talk to him here i'll definitely keep an eye on what i'm doing as try and talk you through what i'm buying and stuff yeah selling him the lodge key the pearl pendant the velvet blues don't sell him anything you can put gems into. I'm selling him the mixed herb here. That's an extra 10k, so we're up to 25k. I actually accidentally upgraded the knife there. Although later on in the run, we do need to upgrade that. So you should have a little bit more money than me if you're following along. I didn't mean to upgrade the uh, the knife there. I think I wanted to upgrade the pistol once. Um, but oh well, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Later on in the run, I think chapter 11... We upgrade the knife, uh, a bunch, to fight Krauser. So it doesn't really matter, but you don't have to upgrade it just yet. In fact, I would hold off on upgrading it just yet. You can do it later. You'll have plenty of money by that point when we get to it. So when we come down here, we're going to smash this barrel, jump into this building. There is a yellow herb here. There's also a first aid spray at the in the back of this building that I'm standing in, sort of the back right corner, if uh, you're judging it from the window I just uh, entered from. Although I didn't know it was there at the time, so I just left it. Look out for any enemies that are pushing you. Be ready to parry, of course, and melee enemies away. I got kind of lucky with that woman with the machete. She just sort of missed as I went for the kick. You want to really look out for the dynamite guys here. And if anyone is throwing one at you, just get away from it as quick as you can. When you come into this building, we're going to shotgun this guy in the face and open up this locker because it has a flash grenade in it. That flash grenade is always there. It's not like a random pickup. 
Flash grenades are really, really valuable in this run, so just make sure you're getting them. Look out for the dynamite guy when you get up here, because he can just ruin your run completely. This is a kind of nasty little area, but this is the only difficult place in Chapter 2, really. Again, I'm just using that shotgun to push back anything that gets close to us. These villagers are quite weak, so if you just hit your shots with the shotgun, you'll... Uh, You'll be fine. Look out for these guys. Try and hit that dynamite guy in the back. You've also got a barrel next to the dynamite guy. So if you're struggling to hit the dynamite guy, you can hit the barrel. And that'll take him out. Again, I'm just slamming through shotgun shells here. When we get up here, I like to turn around and just chuck a nade. Because I've been looting a fair bit. We have picked up a few grenades along the way. We had two from the village that we didn't use, and you might get some random pickups as well if you're lucky. There goes a flashbang then to keep everybody busy and stop them getting too close here. You can kind of skip that if you're not worried too much. But obviously, because I'm very worried about taking hits, it just keeps them away. Alright, let's keep going. Let's get out of here. And pretty much that's chapter 2 done. Like, that is really the only difficult part for chapter 2. There's a few enemies along the way, but we don't have to worry about them too much. They're not particularly powerful enemies, or there's not big groups, so we're good. Alright, so again, we're going to sell our mixed hub, so that gives me an extra 10k. Also, the two first aid sprays give me 10k. One thing to bear in mind as well is if you have got unlocks, like the hand cannon or whatever, you can sell them to the merchant if you don't want to use them. I'm not going to do that here because I feel like that's kind of cheating. I don't want to use bonus items, and I feel like in some sense selling the bonus items for extra cash is kind of cheating. Um, but yeah, I don't want to... I don't want to bother with any of that. I just kind of want to do everything. And really the hardest part about that, even though Leon has stuff like... Um, I nearly got grabbed by that guy. Look out for that guy if you're stabbing the first dude. The hardest part about all of that is not having Ashley's armor. Ashley's armor is so valuable in this difficulty just because enemies will take her out so easily. Even though Leon has stuff like accessories that make him take less damage or the cat ears which give him infinite ammo, stuff like that. That would really just make the run really easy. Like, it wouldn't be difficult if you were to run through the cat ears. Alright, so I'm just getting rid of these enemies. Still got five shotgun shots, which is plenty. And because Leon has the attachment case, just the, the default one that he starts with, that gives him extra handgun ammo in drops, you'll find that you'll just randomly find handgun ammo all over the place. Alright, so in this area we've got a sapphire... We're going to get rid of this bear trap, also shoot the plank, shoot the lamp, and you get another pearl pendant. Make sure you get those two treasures before you push up here, because the chainsaw dude will show up. When he does show up, just come over here, and wait a second. He'll charge you from one side or the other, and when he does, just run around the other side, and then you can leave this area. And duck under this trap, and we're out. Pretty much just look out for bear traps here, and we're done. There is a chicken egg in one oh some gunpowder actually in one of the nests above you in this area but i didn't grab it i think it's just on the house as you run through you can get it at the start of the next chapter as well if you want to so we've got one more enemy to deal with it's really simple we've got a ruby in this drawer and there is a small key over here on this thing in the corner let's go ahead and grab that so we're going to go around deal we've got to open this up the solution to this puzzle is always the same it's crops pig baby there we go yeah just like that and i almost ran off without actually grabbing the key item that we need right here i'm just making up some shotgun shells because i'm a little low and mixing up a hub yeah i forgot to actually pick up the the key item that we need but never mind let's go back open this grab the item crystal marble and I just use the table to keep some distance between me and this guy. Like, get rid of him nice and easy. Here we go. Just take him out. Grab whatever he drops. And up here there is a red hub. There's also a thousand pesetas next to the puzzle we just did. Make sure you grab that as well. So, they're scripted drops. The red hub will always be there. And that thousand pesetas will always be there also. So, solve up this puzzle. 
Kind of just need to move it down and turn it around 180 degrees. There's some pistol bullets in the corner that are always there. Get the insignia key and that's the chapter done. So if you do want to make your first save here, I wouldn't blame you. If you can, push it to chapter 3. I know it's frustrating. If you die, you got to restart. But that's just kind of the way it is. We have got to fight Del Lago at the end of this chapter, which is the big fish. And if you're not confident with that, that fight, it may be worth playing up until that point and then saving it. Or get into the merchant that we're going to reach midway through this chapter and saving it there. To be fair, there's not a lot of danger up until that point. So it's kind of tedious sometimes if you save at the beginning of a chapter and you need to run back all the way to the point where you've got actually got to do a bit of action and and then die in there and then having to loot up again and going back and redoing it. It can be really tedious. So it's a good idea to save after you've done a bunch of that. Although that can save time because you kind of get quicker at moving through stuff and looting things and doing sort of all the little menial stuff that takes a little bit more time when you don't know which way you're going. So when you come down here, there's a crow that lands. You can stab it if you want to. And when the clock tower explodes, if you aim Leon's gun, uh, he'll get released from the animation of him being stunned. When you come in here, get the shotgun ready, just in case that woman is causing you trouble. But you can just run past her. If you want to shoot her, though, that's fine. Uh, I like to just run past her and go to the left and jump through the window. If you want to be a little more safe, just shoot her in the face, and then jump through the window and shoot the other guy in the safe uh, face. When you come through here, open up that box. It's got a viper in it. You want to get these vipers uh, for a merchant request that gonna, we're going to be doing along the way. There's a couple of boxes to smash, a couple of cupboards to open. There is a treasure above us as well, but I think I get it on the way back in Chapter 5. All right, so all of this stuff. There was a first aid spray there, some shotgun shells. We've got a barrel here to smash. Uh, the merchant is here. There's a couple more barrels next to him. Sell up the pearl pendant, the velvet blue... First aid spray is getting sold as well. I'm buying the flash grenade recipe. That's really important. Make sure you buy that. Obviously, we're going to need to make plenty of flashbangs throughout this run. One thing that's worth mentioning for me is that uh, I do merchant requests throughout this run. We're about to do our first one in a minute. When you come into the graveyard, don't shoot any crows because we want to sneak up on this guy and stab him. Because right next to him is the first merchant request that we're going to do. And we just need to stab these two gravestones out for Grave Robber. But yeah, one thing that's worth mentioning is that um, I do get a bunch of merchant requests done throughout this run. And I don't really use the spinels or the spinels. So if you need to buy something with the spinels or the spinels, so I'd say you hold off for a little bit. Because I do buy, I think I buy like the gunpowders. Uh, but there's, I, I have, I think, around 30 spinels left at the end of the run. So one thing you can do if you're struggling for money and you're not quite in the same place as me, maybe because you're using heels that I'm not using and selling to the merchant, um, you can always get stuff with the spinels or spinels. I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but you can get those and then sell them to the merchant just to get a bit of extra money to help you out. All right. <clears throat> so we've got our first kind of enemy encounter coming up around this corner. What I like to do here is get the pistol and shoot this one guy in the hand to make him drop his item, which is like a Molotov. Start from the right. When this guy goes to throw, move to the left and then shoot the barrel that's across from you. That will get these enemies to move out of your way, but also this enemy right here to come up the ladder. If he's running at you at the top of the ladder, you can shotgun him back. But if you drop down the ladder, he'll be right next to you when you drop down. And that'll kind of mean that he'll hit you. he's more than likely going to hit you. Be ready to disarm the trap here. If you want to, you can wait for the enemies to run into it and then shoot it to blow them up after you've disarmed it. But uh, I kind of don't like to do that. I just like to keep running, leave them alone. So we've got a flashbang here. If you haven't got a flashbang, it doesn't really matter. But... It's a good idea to use the flashbang heal to throw into the crows because you'll get a bunch of free loot for taking them all out. You can also get an achievement or a trophy there if you uh, throw the flash at the crows because it'll kill a bunch of them and there's an achievement tied to killing three enemies with one flashbang. Above this area is a lantern and one of the medallions that we need to get as well. The other medallions we're, we're going to come back to in the next chapter, but this one we want to get here. 
You do actually come back to this area a little later, but I just like to get it here because we're looking up anyway to get that treasure. All the loot from these crows kind of helps out a bit. There's got a bunch of gunpowder. You'll get a definite grenade and uh, a ruby. You'll also get a ruby from the lantern. But you should get some gunpowder and some potatoes from them too, which is just nice. Just nice to have extra loot. If you're speedrunning, that's kind of a waste of a flash, but because we're taking our time, we're going to have plenty of stuff to make flash grenades. So when you come to the merchant here, there's a hexagon piece right there. You can save it in this room. If you want to make your first save here, I wouldn't blame you. This is the next the next area is kind of the the more difficult place to deal with um, before Del Lago. Or <clears throat> if you want to brave it out, that's fine. But I would recommend saving it before Del Lago because it's really easy to die on him. And if that's your first save, I'd say you're in a really good spot for the rest of the run. I'll try to mention areas that are difficult and where you should be saving. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like before Del Lago or before this fishing village is where you want to save. Don't do both one or the other. But just bear in mind, if you save before the fishing village, you're going to have to go through it and then deal with Del Lago. All right, so coming in. Running past all those enemies, we're going to disarm this and run across here, jump down. Kind of run straight there to avoid the archer, but if we look back, we can shoot the trap and stun those enemies for a second. Shoot off this padlock, and we're heading in to get our boat fuel. Right, and there's a chicken egg there as well. It's kind of a free heal, I think that's only worth a couple hundred to the merchant, so if you're looking for extra heals... That's a cheeky one to grab. When I come out, I like to throw a flashbang and then kick whoever's in the doorway, which is usually what happens. And then you can shoot the barrel to blow everyone up. So right here, I'm waiting for this guy to shoot at me. or trying to bait him into it before I make this jump because sometimes he'll hit you just before you make the jump. If you're mid-jump and he manages to hit you, then uh, it will just bounce off of you, which is kind of nice. So these enemies can be really annoyed on the way out by the ladder. So I like to use the shotgun just to push them back if I can. Although for some reason they kind of weren't looking at us. They were looking in a different direction. You may be thinking I've missed a lot of loot in this area. But in chapter 4 I spend a bunch of time looting. Um, it's probably one of my longest chapters. But it's because I go around and loot a bunch of stuff in chapter 4. Just so we have extra stuff. Um, there's really not a huge amount we need to do in chapter 4. Other than fight. Uh, El Gigante and get the heads of the statues but there's a ton of loot in this area that you'll miss if you um, if you just race for it. So I spend a little more time on that chapter just so I can get a ton of extra loot um, which will definitely help you out if you're just trying to follow this. So we got another yellow herb there. Make sure you don't miss that yellow herb that's in that little shack. Definitely useful. Alright then. So Del Lago. There's a really useful strategy for this fight. That many of you may not know about. If you sit down in between each harpoon throw. Leon actually throws harpoons faster. So you can hit him with more. Also if you. I didn't really do it here. But if you swing around to the right. Um, of that logo. You can hit him a lot easier. You'll find yourself a lot closer to him. And you can just hit him a lot more. Uh, but I just kind of like to stay at the back. Hit him as much as I can. This fight is not really a lot of fun to do no damage. Just because the boat just gets destroyed really, really quickly. And even though I could technically say if the boat's getting hit, that Leon isn't getting hit. Like, I'm not taking any damage to Leon's health. I still feel like I should really do it without the boat getting hit, which is what I wanted to go for. So that's what we did. So if you hit Del Lago a ton during this fight, if you actually figure it out so that you hit him with every harpoon you throw you can do this fight in one cycle meaning you can kill him here but uh i didn't manage to do that i actually don't know that strategy yet and i need to learn it it's kind of a difficult one you really have to position your harpoons really really well so it takes me a little longer to kill him which is fine it's no bother i actually hit the boat with the harpoon there you would think that counts as a hit to the boat, but it doesn't. The health stayed full, so I'm happy with that. Alright. Usually when I make these no damage videos, there's somebody who will say something like, That counts as a hit, and... 
This game actually tracks the damage you take, which is nice. At the end of each chapter, it kind of tells you whether you've taken damage or not. We will take a look at that at the end of the run. And all of them are zeros, fat donuts. And that's pretty much all I need. I'm not sure, though, if the boat gets hit, if that does change. I just wanted to, you know, do this without getting hit. Oh, okay, so I think a few more harpoons. And he's gonna, maybe going to be done with. I, looking at the time left of the video, that's probably wrong. I think from what I've heard, the way Del Lago's health works is really weird. Like, if you hit him with enough in the first cycle, he will die. But if he makes it to the second cycle, it's like he gets a bunch more health. And you have to hit him more. It is very frustrating. It's a difficult fight. Also, from what I've heard, it's easier to hit him on a lower frame rate. But I keep these, I'm keeping this run and the previous runs that I've done to 60. Just so that anyone playing on console can kind of follow along without there being any frame rate memes, you know? It's a big thing when you're actually doing the speed run. I don't mind doing it for real speed runs, but doing it for uh, stuff like this really doesn't bother me. All right. He's got to be close now. I'm pretty sure he's close. Come on. Couple more should do it. We ain't got a lot of time left on this video, so or this chapter, so should be real close. Come on, mate. So difficult to hit when he's doing this jump and stuff. I just missed him a ton. There we go. About time. Beautiful. And that's chapter three done. Not an easy fight with Del Largo, but there it is. Okay, so. Chapter 4 then, a couple of cutscenes to skip at the start. So this run, or this chapter, sorry, is uh, one of the longer ones in the run, but unfortunately it's just kind of, it just kind of focuses on going around and getting, a loot, getting as much loot as we can. Um, this chapter really sets you up for future chapters, just because there's so much stuff you can get here, backtracking to different areas. I, I don't even, I don't actually get it all. I get a bunch of it, but there's a ton more that you can get in this area. And a lot of it's just worth getting. I think this chapter takes around 25 minutes, although if you want to do it quick, it can be done in like 10. However, if you just rush for it, you'll find yourself with a lot less money than me early game. Later into the run, like I mentioned before, it's really not as important when it comes to loot. But it is really important in these early stages because we don't have powerful guns. We don't have a lot of money. Uh, and just sort of gathering up as much stuff as we can is very important. So in that first section, you can just run past the Plaga's head and just shoot the other guy down with the shotgun. Like, you can try and run past him if you want to and save the shotgun shell, but sometimes he will hit you, so I just like to shoot him, and then we'll find to run past. Running straight around here, at the bottom of this ramp, we can find the Way Shrine key, which is just on the right. Go ahead and grab that. And, uh, yeah, got another barrel here to smash. What takes us a ton of time is just smashing all of these barrels for loot, man. Can be really tedious. So in this section, we've got two heads that we need to collect in order to solve a puzzle. One of them is full of enemies, one of them is not. So I'm going to do the one that is full of enemies first. And that's the thing I like to do pretty much straight away in this area. I do want to come to the merchant first, though, just to get a couple of upgrades for our rifle using the money that we've gathered up so far it can make the next area a lot easier actually i need to buy the rifle so i'm going to buy the yellow hub right here and we can make another mixed hub and sell in both of those we'll get us another 20k along with the uh treasures that we found chicken egg can go as well that brings us up to 74k which is really nice we can get the case upgrade the snipe, get the scope as well, and then we can upgrade the rifle twice at this point. Slap the scope on, and we're uh, in a good spot with our rifle already. Super important to get that rifle upgraded, just because during the El Gigante fight, it's very, very powerful. 
Okay. So we're going to come back to the merchant in a little bit and sort out some more stuff. But it's just worth going to him now. Because we're going to go through this area that has a bunch of enemies in it. And even though you can, if you want to, just run past everyone here. It's kind of dangerous on the way back. On the way back you'll find there's big clumps of enemies and they can easily just slap you down. If you're happy enough to try and run past them to get to the puzzle and solve it, the solution's always the same, so if it will be the same for me as it is for you. Um, but, yeah. You do what you think is best. I like to wait right here for a second. This guy has really weird path in, and he'll sort of turn around a couple of times before he actually starts walking back. You'll know when he's about to walk back, though, because he sort of stops for a couple of seconds and looks in your direction as if he's actually checking over there, and then he turns around. But if you watch him, at first he'll sort of go back and forward, like two or three times, before he eventually does turn around. In that box that we smashed that's kind of next to him is always a flash grenade. Make sure you get that. And, and then we've got these two guys. What I'm trying to do here is get the other guy to come out so that I can blow up the dynamite and get both of them. But sometimes he just sort of sits back here like he doesn't want to aggro just yet. So we're just going to chill. Pick him off with the pistol. We have got a ton of pistol bullets just because of that case that we have. One thing that's really important with professional is just to get good at parries. Parrying those axes that get thrown at you is actually pretty easy. But later on there are some parries that can be really tricky with bosses, especially Krauser. Krauser is not a lot of fun to deal with in this. So with the upgrade that we've just got, most of the time when you shoot a Plagas head... Just missing those shots, I don't know how. When you shoot a Plagas head with the rifle, it will pretty much destroy it. If it doesn't, it'll be one, maybe two pistol shots, and it'll be done for. Later in the game, though, that isn't the case, and can be super frustrating. Alright. So, if you see Leon standing in fire, he'll sort of do that thing where he's sort of swiping away the fire. He doesn't actually take damage from that unless you stand in it for too long. But you kind of have to stand in it for a couple of seconds for your health to actually get affected. So as long as when someone throws fire at you, you just move out of the way of it quickly, you won't take damage. Something to bear in mind. Alright. So that's everyone here taken care of. There's another guy here that chucks axes. But we're not going to go that way just yet. We're going to come up the ladder. There's a few more enemies here and we kind of want to be quick on dealing with them. One of them runs out with a Molotov, so shoot the Molotov and then turn around and you'll have these guys coming behind you on the ladder and you can keep them sort of below you by shooting him off the ladder. This guy's ran back on me. Be careful of him, because he may be pushing up. Playing it really safe here, just so we don't have to worry so much. There we go. Get rid of him. Those things can't hit you. Oh, he actually came around. Yeah, the guy who had the Molotov actually went all the way around. This was actually a really rough deal here. A lot of the time... One of these guys may become a Plaga's head, but most of the time, two of them just won't happen. The game was just not being nice to me. That's fine. We're prepared. And now we got this one guy left to deal with. If he mutates, I'm going to jump down and stab him. Alright, grab the loot off these dudes. Back up the ladder then. All the way up. Kind of a long way to take this, but it's just super safe, you know? Playing the safe is really important. So this guy has dynamite. Easy to get rid of him. There's a lantern right there on our left as we cross this bridge. Be careful crossing that bridge because you can easily jump off the edge of it when you're not meaning to. Alright. So a box here. Stab that. Open that up. A few handgun bullets. So the puzzle solution here is this one, this one, and this one. Always the same. There's the apostate's head. And... We're going to jump down here, and there's just a couple of barrels down here. We're going to smash them, and then go back up to make this route just a little bit safer. i got a hand grenade there, which is definitely useful. Alright. One thing I will say is that try not to use grenades too much. Flash grenades are also super valuable. If you see me use one, it's probably something I was intending to do, rather than just like panic throwing a nade. So try to avoid doing that, because nades are very, very valuable when it comes to certain fights. So I decided to just try and run past these guys. There's only a few. A couple will come for the left over here. We should be good to make it to the door. 
So if you've ran past all of the enemies in this area, they'll pretty much all be stacked on you there. So that's why I've taken out most of them, just to make my exit nice and safe. So we're just going to go straight here. The quicker way is to go back on yourself, but if you come this way, there's some barrels to smash and also a couple of treasures to grab. So it's just a good idea to come this way. There's a couple of barrels under this bridge here in this sort of like cave type area. Pickups always help. A bit of gunpowder, some money there. We got a way shrine here and there's also a treasure up there. I like to shoot this one first because we've got to open the way shrine and that takes a little bit of time. So we get a is it an elegant bangle, splendid bangle. Grab that, and this is an Alexandrite, I think. Yep, there we go. It's a relatively rare gem. Good to get this early on. And with the gems, there are a couple of treasures we get throughout the run that you can sell for mega money. So it's just worth copying me to make sure you get these treasures. Although again, by the end of the run, I end up with way more stuff than I need. But that's kind of intentional. I just wanted to make sure that if anyone does follow this, it's followable. And it's not just something that, you know, only worked out for me. Like there will be, you will have plenty of money by the end of the run. So in here, we've got an Alexandrite, a barrel, and around the back is the red nine. If you like the red nine, you can use it obviously, but I'd recommend only keeping one pistol. So if you're gonna keep the red nine, sell the other pistol that we've got right now. Um, but I just sell the Red Nine. Later on, I get the Black Tail anyway, because it's like the best pistol in the game. Super powerful. And that's the one we're going to go for. We'll end up selling the pistol we have now. So coming over to the Chicken Village then, we've got a Satyrs, Velvet Blue. There's a gold chicken egg here. Make sure you do not sell the chicken egg to the merchant. We are keeping that chicken egg. Also, all the other eggs can come with us too. We're using that uh, chicken egg in chapter 12. So make sure you keep it until then. There are two golden eggs in the entire game. And we're going to get them both and use them to kill a boss. If you use those at all, you're pretty much screwing yourself out of a really easy kill. So even if you're really desperate for health, just don't use it. Don't sell it. We're going to use it to kill a boss later on. You have been warned. Alright, so... A few barrels to smash. We've got this puzzle here. Again, the solution's always the same. These three are the ones you want to press. And we've got a couple of pickups in here. There's rifle ammo in the corner of this room. Make sure you don't miss it. Rifle ammo is super valuable. And another hexagon piece. Hexagon piece C. Alright. When you come up here, there's a ruby. Grab that. Open this up. And around the back here is a little cupboard to open, which has some stuff in it. All right. And we can leave this area now. Sorted. So, now that that's done, I think we've got one more little area to go to. That was really good turning by me there. Just, yep, the drag on the wall of shame, mate. So, across the lake there's a bunch of little barrels you may have seen me smashing them on the, my way out from collecting that treasure earlier as well that was intentional just because there's big lines of barrels there that you can smash up to get they're only worth a hundred a piece but you probably get a couple of thousand by smashing them all so kind of worth right so all the way over here then is where we need to go and as you jump off the boat this is kind of where we got on the boat to fight Dalago. There's a blue medallion right there. Okay. So we're going to go up the ladder. And around here. So we're going back to this area to collect all the loot that's here. There was literally nothing that we grabbed out of the fishing village. And there's like a, gr a definite grenade here. Also, all the other blue medallions are here. One of the hexagon pieces is, is here. And there's also like a bunch of barrels. One thing that's really useful here are the vipers. The vipers just give you extra healing items if you are using them. But uh, they're worth a thousand apiece to the merchant. Also, selling the merchant three vipers gets you um, one of the merchant requests done. So, pretty much while you're here, just be on the lookout for vipers everywhere. I think I get two or three out of it. There is, as long as you get one, 
you can get the merge from request done because there's one more that we can get on the way back to the church later in this chapter um but yeah just keep your eye out for them and just get them if you see them getting two or three is pretty much where you want to sit although sometimes you can come out of here with like four or five quite easily and if you're really struggling for money and you don't care about time bear in mind you've got to beat the game in under five and a half hours to get the s plus um but if you're just going for beating the game on professional you don't really need the s plus so but someone said to me i in my previous guide somebody said that um achievements don't stack so if you beat this on s plus you won't get the hardcore s plus achievement or trophy that isn't true because Literally in the run I did, I, have, I haven't even played the game on hardcore mode. I've only played it on professional, standard, and assisted. So, and I got that achievement for hardcore S+. Plus. I haven't even done a hardcore playthrough, so I know that 100% isn't true. So if you are trying to get the professional S+, plus to get um, peerless agent achievement or trophy and the S+, plus rank investigator achievement or trophy, you will get both of them from this one run, assuming you do it with an S+, plus rank. So all the loot around here then make sure you grab this small key a couple of barrels and whatnot there was another box inside that building where the boat fuel was i'm just making the most of getting everything the, he the other hexa hexagon piece is also down there make sure you grab that there's a big treasure that we get for getting all three of those that's worth like 15k which is really really good this early on in the game i uh, will disarm this i'm being very careful here not to set that off i really thought i was going to set that off there but we didn't coming down here then i think this is the last thing bar one we want to collect there's like a, a barrel on the way out that we can collect as well i know it's kind of long to do all of this stuff and you can definitely save yourself a bunch of time I'm not sure what i was going back for here i don't know if i missed something oh i didn't get the hexagon piece i remember now yeah i came back for it make sure you grab this hexagon piece at least you guys get to see where it is uh and there's also a medallion here as well this will be the last medallion good job i came back man almost forgot that so let's destroy the blue medallions too. And uh, that hexagon piece, like I said, that treasure's worth 15k. And it's really worth getting. Blue medallions, for me, they're, they're not really necessary. Because I, I, I was in the early stages, I didn't really know how the end of the game was going to work out for me loot wise. And I could have, if I wanted to, by the time I got around to like chapter 9 or 10, just sort of started absolutely slamming through the game. But. I decided to take it a little bit slower, just for anybody who's following along. Makes it really easy to follow. Lots of loot. But to be honest as well, one thing that's very important throughout the run is ammo. You just need to find ammo all the time. So smashing boxes and doing all that stuff just makes my journey through this much more comfortable with all the ammo I need. Alright, so let's go ahead and sort this out. The solution should be the same for you. As it is for me. Pretty simple. There we go. Easy. We get the depraved idol. I'm pretty sure that's worth 15k. Which is very, very nice at the beginning of the game. So if you couldn't quite make those upgrades for the rifle, you should be in a good spot to do it now. Also, one thing to think about is if you are low on money at this point and you're like, oh, I haven't got the same amount of money because I... Uh, I used it all or whatever. You can farm vipers and fish and then go and sell them to the merchant. But that does take time. Bear in mind that will add a bunch of time to your time. Here I didn't have enough space for everything. I'm pretty sure I had to discard an egg or two. And maybe a snake. Just so that I had uh, enough space. I ended up with four vipers. Which is too many. And we needed eight slots here. So I think the vipers take up two. And the eggs take up two, and I've already got two. So I'm pretty sure... Did I have to discard two vipers? I honestly don't remember. Yeah, I may have. This is the last thing we want to get for the merchant. And it's uh, it's another merchant request. It's always in that area that I went back over to. So you can grab it there. Yeah, I ended up just discarding another snake. I was kind of confused here as to what to do, but that'll do. If we go and sell this stuff to the merchant, we will have a bunch of space in the inventory. So let's get back over there. We can grab the key first by putting the two heads in.
same mark from the church. Is this the key? Away we go then. Back to the merchant. So we've got one more fight coming up. And if you followed along with me with the looting, it may be a good idea to save it before this fight. Um, because this fight can be a little bit tricky if it's your first time through. And this will be your second save uh, midway through chapter 4. So you're actually doing really well when it comes to saves. Just don't get crazy with your saves. That's all I will say to you guys. Again, I'll try to mention the areas that you should be saving in and what you want to look out for. It is usually a good idea to save mid-chapter with a lot of the chapters because there's like boss fights and stuff and intense fights that can definitely screw you over. Um, but just manage. make sure you're managing the number of saves that you're on. So we're selling the Antique Pipe, the Praved Idol, Brass Pocket Watch... Everything we can. We got another mixed hub. Uh, let's see what else we can sell, if anything. I think yeah, the egg can go. Red nine as well. Can go the vipers. And that's given us 15 and the lunker bass as well. 64k. So we're in really good shape with money already. And we can upgrade our rifle another time and then upgrade the pistol's power. Because this is professional, you can take your upgrades uh, a lot further. Coming back in here, we have the spinals now. I buy the red barrel and the yellow diamond and the elegant mask. Pretty much just the treasures. Like I mentioned before, by the end of this run, I end up with another like 30 spinals or spinals, whatever. So I wouldn't sell the treasures that don't have gems in them just yet. I would keep hold of those because one thing that's really important throughout this run is to get... Uh, Rocket launchers in certain areas, and they cost 160k throughout Professional, which is why you see me collecting pretty much all the stuff we can. There are like a few places where we need to buy rocket launchers to beat bosses to make it a lot easier on us. And a lot quicker too. So when we start out against El Gigante, we'll want to chuck a nade at him, hit him with a sniper shot, and then we can run to this shack and loot it. Get what's in the boxes, and then when he comes close to grab it, run away, get the grenades ready, and then chuck a grenade at him. If you time it right, you can stop him from throwing the shack at you, and do a bit of damage to him with the rifle too. So, again, do the same thing, run out as he's grabbing it, chuck a nade at him. There we go, and then we can snipe him a couple of times, chuck a flash, and that'll stop him from charging you. Reload up the snipe here. Make sure your sniper's loaded. And... We're waiting for the worm to come out of his back. And you'll see it when he sort of got, like does that raw thing. And then you've got to shoot him in the back. And then... Dog will appear when he goes down and you shoot him for the first time. And then you can jump on his back, stab him if you want after shooting him. I like to try and shoot him. And then jump on his back and stab him up a little. I actually had the wrong knife equipped there, but it's fine. Alright, so reloading up the snipe. This is why we saved the dog in the earlier chapter, because basically the LG is kind of 50-50 here what, what he will do. He'll either go after the dog or go after you, but it just kind of gives you an increased chance of not getting chased around by him, which is really nice. This is why I recommend saving before this fight. Alright, and you know, if you are sort of waiting just before doing this fight, you can tra backtrack to the merchant and save it there. Alright, if he does that beat in his chest thing, it means he's about to charge at you, so make sure you run out of the way. Just using up some pistol ammo, because I've got like 80 odd pistol ammo, rather than wasting good sniper ammo. So, trying to hit him a couple of times with the pistol here, but when he hits the wall, I'm going to switch over to the snipe, and he'll sort of hit the floor here, and we can snipe him a good couple of times in the worm. If you can hit this third shot, it's really nice. Does a lot to him. But wait for him to finish his roar. Don't throw that flashbang too early. You sort of see him move his hands after that roar. And that kind of means that you can stun him with the flashbang. You throw it too early and he won't get stunned. Alright, another flashbang. I think my, the fight was a bit sloppy there, but the flashbang finished him off. There we go. 
Make sure you grab the yellow diamond that he drops. Pistol bullets there. And we're on our, we're on our way back to the church. That's chapter four, pretty much. I know that was a long one. I spent a lot of time looting in that chapter that I really didn't need to. Uh, just because later on we have so much loot. But in the early game, I did want to include it all. Just to make myself more comfortable. And I know I keep mentioning it, but for those who are following to try and get their own S plus rank... It should make it a lot easier for you. In this box, you can find a Viper. Um, it's an easy healing item if you need one, but also you can sell it to the merchant for a thousand. So totally worth it. All right. Okay, so when you get here with these cutscenes where you see the dog walking around the corner, if you just aim any weapon, it will break the cutscene and allow Leon to like gain control again. And in an, in an instance like that, the cutscene is showing the dog walking towards you. So you essentially gain control of Leon while the cutscene's still going on. All you need to do is aim and yeah, you can shoot the dog before it gets a chance to mutate or anything and it just makes the section a lot easier. All right, so blue dial. Let's go, go, go. This run took forever to put together. I just want to say that. Like, it took many attempts to do these chapters, no damage. Wasn't easy at all. Some of them were much harder than others, uh, just because of the way my saves were structured as well, like doing it chapter to chapter. I had decent chunks of the game's game without saving, and it may look easy, but trust me, it wasn't. It was very, very frustrating. All you see in here is my successful attempt. There were many, many... Uh, failed attempts that me and my stream chat had to endure, man. It took a lot of time. If you're one of the people from my stream chats, I appreciate your patience. Thanks for hanging out during the attempts. It's absolutely insane. Uh, if you want to join the streams, you can find my Twitch link down in the pinned comment below this video. Also. Ashley, you in there? All right, so that's the end of chapter four then. Next up, we got chapter five, which is our first one with Ashley. Let's go. Okay then, chapter five. So the we start off here, we want to come over here to the right. Smash this lantern to get a yellow diamond. Nice and easy. So there's a glitch here you can use to drop through the floor and essentially just run out the front of the church. And that saves a bunch of hassle in this area. One thing I want to point out is that Ashley is very annoying to look after without the suit of armor. But that's just the way it is. Her AI can be really frustrating at times because if she gets grabbed and then you save her, she kind of just stands there for a while and that can make things really difficult to deal with. So right here we've got some attachable mines. There'll also be some handgun ammo usually in that barrel. And also those couple of barrels at the back. Before you drop down here, grab the flash grenade that's behind you. You can kind of just step backwards and grab it, but if you want to turn around and grab it, that also works. So, move this out of the way then, and away we go. So I'm going to wait here for a second and try and look around this corner to look at that guy with the axe. We want him to be facing the other way before we stab this enemy, because... She will, or he will alert the others, and if we're lucky, we can run up and stab this guy before he gets a hit on us, but he spotted us that time, so I had to parry him and just run off. We're kind of hoping here that Ashley will just stick with us. If you do mess this section up, and you're going for your S+, plus, it's a good idea if you get hit here just to restart. Just well, the, restart the chapter, just because it's right at the start, it can be a little tedious to do that first bit again, but it's just worth it. If you are quick enough to that first guy, like I said, you can get the stab on him. And that stops the other enemies from sort of knowing where you are. Leon will say that you've been spotted, but the enemies won't really come after you. So it makes the section a bit easier. So just setting up my Viper, some submachine gun ammo, and whatever else. Upgrading the shotgun one time, and then moving on. Not going to upgrade the shotgun too much, because we're going to get the riot gun eventually. Having a little upgrade on it is nice. So, 
Again, this is another enemy we can stab. We sort of want to hug the left when we come out of the church door and you can run up and him and stab him. If you are going to do that, just make sure you're really close to the enemy before you do it. So right here, we need to wait for Ashley to open this door. That lets us know that she's close enough. And then gun it straight out of the door, past this enemy, and come for this ladder. You're kind of looking for any ladder that's still up. If the ladder isn't up for you, which can happen, um, you want to look for one that is. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through the house and maybe flashbang the enemies so that you can make it through the window without actually getting grabbed. Different things can happen there, but... It is what it is. So, sneaking up on that guy just by walking slowly at first and then running up on him. If you run straight up on him, he'll probably spot you. So you just want to walk for the first few steps around that corner and then run. Make it to this door. Even if Ashley gets grabbed, when you come through this door, this guy will just drop her. But if she is getting carried away, just use the shotgun to make him drop her and you'll be fine. Smash that barrel. We're going to try and stab this enemy. Make sure his back's turned to you before you stab him. If you try to run up on him like we have with a couple of other enemies, it won't work out too well. Sometimes you can get the whole run up and stab on this guy. If he spots you, just shotgun him. Keep running past. We're going to throw a flashbang over this guy's head and in between the fences at the back. And that will stun everyone up here, including the brute that's right here. Just keep running. And uh, you should be good after that. If you time that just right with the brute there, he won't even see you or Ashley. He won't come after you. So you'll be good to go. When we gain control in the cabin then, we're going to grab up all the loot. We've got boards, herbs, grenades. Seal up this window and we can slap boards on the windows. So for this area, you need, either need to kill a bunch of enemies or board up three of the windows. The quicker way to do this area is to use the sniper, shoot through the windows and sort of try to get multiple enemies with singular shots. But... It's very difficult to pull off. That's how the speedrunners do it. That's probably how I'll be doing it when I start speedrunning this game. But uh, I think the much safer way to do this is just to chill on the stairs. If you wait right here, the enemies that are throwing stuff at you will a lot of the time hit the wooden beam at the bottom of the stairs. Or at the top here. And if they are throwing at you, you can just sort of duck away and avoid them. Obviously, you can parry if you need to. But we're just going to chill up here and pick off enemies because at this point in the cabin, they won't come from upstairs. They'll only come from downstairs. And if anyone does come after you, you just want to sort of back up, use the shotgun to push them back. When you do come upstairs a bit more, enemies might start climbing up the ladder to your left. So watch out for that. They can be sneaky and get behind you. As a rule of thumb, you kind of want to be checking that regularly because, yeah, like this guy. It will just sneak up on you and it's very annoying to deal with. Keep an eye out on enemies that want to mutate. Pick up loot that they're dropping, all that good stuff. And just sort of hold your ground at the top of the stairs here. Pick up whatever loot you can. I was kind of hoping that guy would mutate, but he didn't. And if you want to, you can pistol enemies through the window and push them back outside. Uh, but to be honest, I want their loot. So I kind of want them to come in. Doing my best to help out Luis here, but, you know, he's kind of hopeless. Good thing about the stairs is if enemies are on the stairs and you knock them over, they'll fall down the stairs, which is really nice. Can use a grenade here if you want to. You did find one at the beginning of this, but uh, just doing my best to push enemies back. If you feel uncomfortable and they're getting too close, you know, you can break out the shotgun. Although, I'm trying my best to save ammo for it. I don't really want to use too much of my shotgun ammo pushing people back. Because we have a bunch of pistol ammo at this point with all the looting we've done. We've got like 80 shots left and we've already used a ton. So I'm just trying to make the most of that ammo. Okay. Be careful running down the stairs to stab enemies. There may be others lurking on corners. There's one of the boards on the window. We got this guy with the spade. Another guy who climbed up the ladder, the sneaky git. Shotgun time, he thinks. Yep. Push that guy back. Sometimes enemies will get distracted by Luis and go after him as well, which is kind of nice. I'll leave you alone. Alright. So this guy mutated. Didn't get to him in time. Reloading my snipe. Alright, a couple of handgun bullets should finish him off. He's being tough. 
There we go. Quick parry. Another parry. Another parry. Oh my god, the parries. Alright, cheeky reload. More people throwing projectiles at us. Alright. So here comes the ladder. So at this point, you want to do your best to get downstairs if you can. Is that other board? I'm going to try and board up the window. We can stab this guy. No, not quick enough, apparently. Alright, so let's use the shotgun to clear out this area. Slap the boards up. And you want to kind of... I think it's five enemies you need to kill before the brute shows up. So you can use the table to keep some distance between you and the enemies if you want to. Just pick them off. If you feel like you can get some pistol shots in, obviously do it. But just be careful because these guys will rush around it very quickly. Just kind of panicky at this point. Definitely worried. So if I can get the stab off here, there we go. Alright, so we should have the brute coming real soon. There we go. While he's jumping through the window, it's a good idea to use the snipe. Hit him with a few shots because it does mega damage. And then I like to come over here away from him so he's not doing a sweeping attack. Chuck his flash at him, run up and stab. And then grenades are good. Use the shotgun to clear out anyone who's in your way. Quick grenade or two. That'll stun him out of his attack that he's going to do that is really frustrating to do anything about. If you can, grab the emerald from his body. If you can't, don't worry about it too much. But I, I didn't manage to get it, but it does help to get it. And that's chapter 5. Okay. On to chapter 6 then. Let's go. So... In my opinion, this is the hardest chapter in the run. For me, at least. If you really want to, you may be able to stretch getting a rocket launcher for Mendez here, although I would recommend not doing it, because using the money that we get from everything we've gathered so far can just help us get some better weapons, strong stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's just a good idea to... Not do that. So I'm putting the yellow diamonds into the elegant mask. Putting some sapphires into the flagon. And one of each gem into the butterfly lamp. That will give us a ton of money straight away. We got the splendid bangle we can put the two alexandrites we have into. And then we can sell him all of these treasures. Sell him the shotgun as well. Get the riot gun. And we're going to tune up the riot gun all the way to level 4. And we're also going to upgrade the rate of fire on the rifle. Sorry if that was a wee bit fast there. Hopefully you can just follow along with what I said. we got a bunch of loot here to grab. Yeah, we're going to need those for Mendes. So, and that's why we didn't upgrade the shotgun. You can walk here if you want to. Don't bother running into this area. You might alert the enemy that's just in front of you. And if you can see the sort of flames or the guy with the flaming torch through the wood panel here in front of me. We're waiting for him to turn around before we move forward and take out this enemy. And then what you can do here is sort of tap sprint and sprint in steps, or just walk up a few steps on this guy and then sprint at him. If you just run at him, he'll more than likely hear you and turn around and alert everyone. And we don't want that because we want to grab this yellow diamond and also get a second to grab the large resources that's around this corner. And this box, there's also some boxes here. As soon as you stab these, Press your reload or, or uh, aim button to pull out the shotgun quick enough so that when you come out of there, you can shoot the lady with the crossbow and quickly switch to a flash grenade and throw it deep into the area. And that will stun up all of the enemies, including the brute, giving you enough time to get out of here. And when you get out of here, um, enemies will leave you alone. When you come to here, there'll be a guy chilling on the corner. So we want to sort of shoot through the door and get him. Be ready to run away. I tell Ashley to back up here because if she's too close, she can get in your way and just basically cause you to get hit. So just be ready to move back because he can sometimes rush through the door and smack you or uh, hit you with his tentacle head if he does manage to mutate. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll knock him down and get the chance to run in and stab him. Uh, but just be ready. To move out of the way of him. So this part is kind of tricky. This whole chapter is pretty tricky, to be honest. Just because sure we've got quiet. pretty much two boss fights. So remember earlier I was saying spread out your saves? You might want to make a save before the final boss fight of this chapter, which isn't here, but 
So running up here and sticking to the right of the stairs pretty quickly will allow you to stab this guy. And then we can deal with this lady with a pistol. Just, again, I'm keeping Ashley far away. Because if she's next to you, she can end up getting hit. And just in your way in general. I've actually shot her. Or she's trying to get close, closer to you running up the stairs and stuff before. So it's just a good idea to tell her to stay back and keep her that way. Until you've dealt with those two enemies. Loot up this area then. We've got a couple of barrels, some handgun ammo. And a few other little things. We're going to come up here. There's a yellow herb on our left. Nice. Slap that in. Craft up a flash grenade. We really need to make sure we have a flash grenade for this area. So make sure you have one crafted. Like I mentioned before, the large resources are super useful. And you don't want to use grenades pretty much where I'm not using them. I do end up with a couple of grenades left at the end of the run, but they're so valuable, especially flash grenades and uh, also the large resources. If you've got enough rifle ammo here, if you've got a bunch of rifle ammo, don't worry about crafting some like I did. Um, I crafted some rifle ammo, which costs a large resources. There is some rifle ammo just there on that window ledge. You might get lucky and get some out of the barrels in this area, uh, but if you are a little bit light, uh, you might need to get some for this section. So tell Ashley to get into the locker, grab the first aid spray that's in this area, and we're going to interact with the handle. When you gain control, you want to focus on shooting the chainsaw lady on the right. And the easiest or the most important thing I can say to you here is hit your shots. If you can hit her with three shots and then turn and shotgun the dude in the doorway when he bursts through, that's really good because you can back up, switch back to the snipe, and hit her with one more shot to kill her, and she'll always have the crank. And then we just need to avoid the other chainsaw lady, clear out the doorway with a shotgun, get out here, make sure Ashley is following you at this point. When you kill the first chainsaw lady, you want to be getting Ashley to follow you again, so calling her out of the locker there is the best thing to do. Uh, and when you get to about there, chuck the flashbang back on yourself where you've just ran from. And a lot of the time, if somebody has grabbed Ashley, she'll get released from the flashbang. And also, she'll get dropped sometimes when she's getting carried away like she just did for me so what we're hoping for is we can get this door open before the chainsaw lady catches us because she won't follow you past this point so this bella sister will just sort of stand here and then run away and ashley will come through if ashley is getting chased sometimes an enemy may chase you through the door be ready to shotgun him but they'll sort of walk past the path of the door so you can use the snipe to free her. You don't have to go back in unless you get unlucky. That is a very, very tight section, but it's a very efficient way to do it. With a little bit of practice, it is doable. And uh, there's a flashbang, flashbang and a few pickups in this room. Make sure you get them all. We are going to need them. Again, we're going to need our flashbangs. So yeah, that is a very tight section and not a lot of fun. But once you get your head around it, it's pretty doable. Hopefully I explained it well enough there. So we come up here, shotgun this guy. And then shotgun this lady who throws an axe at us. Keep running, stick to your right, pull out the pistol heel. When all these enemies run forward, shoot the barrel. Shoot this lady. And there's two more guys at the back here. Shoot them. You want to try and shoot the guy before he uh, throws his axe. Get rid of them. This way. And away we go. That little section is really easy once you get your head around it. Just want to make sure you're not getting hit by the enemies throwing projectiles. And you're not reloading in the middle of the fight. So, if you did save at the end of chapter 2, like I mentioned earlier, this is a good point to save. Like, if you're keeping the amount of saves under the amount of chapters you've done, so if you're on save number 4 now, you should be good to go with your saves, but it's a good idea to save before this fight, because it sucks. It absolutely sucks. So, make sure you've got a grenade ready before you drop into this fight. Straight away, chuck a grenade to the right of him, and then climb up this ladder run as far back as you can and he shouldn't be able to hit you you've got a uh, couple of kitchen knives in this area but we're just going to grab the one that's behind me right now be ready to parry these attacks but you also want to make sure you're not completely exhausting your knives so if your knife is really broken here you might want to visit the merchant before you attempt at this fight and repair it reload your shotgun and then hit him with one or two shots and then jump down to stab him Again, when you're stabbing him, you want to be switching to a grenade so that you can throw it as soon as you gain control again. And that'll stun him long enough for you to get back up the ladder. So what I like to do is use hit him with five or six pistol bullets. 
basically I'm using one clip of pistol throughout this part of the fight. And then use the shotgun to shoot him in the back and the eyeball. Make sure you're getting ready for these parries, man, because it can really suck uh, to get hit by that attack. It takes a lot of damage off you. So I'm reloading the shotgun before we start anything. Make sure you've got the pistol reloaded here as well. We need to essentially hit him with sniper bullets in between his attacks. If you just run from left to right when he does that double throw, you'll be in a good spot. But you want to make sure you've got the handgun reloaded so that you can hit him when he pulls up the barrels. So as soon as he goes to pull up the barrels, you want to whip out your pistol and shoot one of them. And uh, when he does this attack, if you start from one side of the area we're in and run to the other, as just as he's about to throw, you can dodge both of those. So when he throws like this, you kind of be want, want to be standing in line with him. If you're in line with him, like sort of central with him, he won't be able to hit you. So when he jumps forward here, you want to run forward as much as you can without walking into the flames and duck down. That way he'll miss you with the attack. And then you can quickly turn around and shoot him in the back with the shotgun. He might do this thing where he sort of jumps about a bunch, which is really frustrating to deal with. Makes this fight super difficult and hard to track. Keep shotgun shots on him though, and you'll get him done. Like I said, a bit of practice on that fight. And it's not too difficult, but it is, yeah, I, I really don't like that fight. Not the funnest of fights. Some people will say use the, using the TMP will make that fight a lot easier if you get it upgraded. Uh, but I just prefer to use the shotgun. It's up to you what you use. Experiment a little bit, see if you find the TMP easier. I know that some people do. Um, but you'll have to get it upgraded to do a decent amount of damage. One thing I don't like about the TMP is it's kind of hard to find ammo, so you have to craft it. Or at least with the shotgun, you find ammo all over the place. I promise. I feel like I, unless it's got something to do with the weapons that you're carrying, maybe because you're carrying a shotgun, you find shotgun ammo and rifle a rifle, and you find TMP ammo when you're carrying a TMP. Uh, but yeah, I don't really use the TMP at all in this run. But yeah, that's chapter six. Moving on to chapter seven then. Okay. So, on to chapter 7 then. So, if you did save it at the beginning of this chapter, or if you are waiting for me to tell you to save it, you may want to save it before we do this section. If you... your If your first save was at the end of chapter 3, or before Del Lago, you might want to save twice during this chapter. But, uh, again... Keep track of your saves. Bear in mind, you only have 15. I would recommend just trying to brave this chapter out. Save at the start of it and then try to get through it all together. This is a long chapter though and not a lot of fun at all. Because you've got a big fight at the start. You've got the Garados guy, the blind dude of the claws. And uh, water hall. Right here I'm getting the broken butterfly, the magnum ammo, the black tail and upgrading the black tail a couple of times. Uh, we were also selling our other pistol to get the black tail. It's a more powerful handgun. You have to reload it a little more frequently, but it's a lot more powerful. Okay, so we're going to come this way. And when you get here, you want to aim your gun about here or so. And that'll most of the time stop Leon from getting stunned there. If you do get stunned, just keep tapping aim and Leon will get released from the stun a little bit quicker. Which allows you to just run past that guy and not deal with him. Dealing with him now is just a massive ammo waste. And we don't want to do that. Alright, so coming up here, this is another one of those cutscenes we can skip just by aiming when it's playing. And then we want to take out this enemy. I didn't want to stab her because I just want to preserve my knife for a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and grab the stuff off him. When we come up these stairs, we can look through the window and shoot the chain bag here to bring the cannon up early. Aiming again, we'll skip that cutscene of the cannon coming up. Look up there with the rifle and take that guy out. And then we can aim at this barrel next to the trebuchet to take this one out. If you stay in this position, the trebuchet won't hit you, so don't worry. You'll be able to take your time to hit that shot. Uh, but yeah, there's a barrel just next to it. And that allows you just to take it out nice and early so you don't have to worry about it too much. Alright, sorry about the pause there. Right. 
So I'll take out this enemy. When you're shooting at this guy, you want to be mindful of behind you because an enemy will be running up to you. These enemies are really focused on Ashley though. So a lot of the time, they'll just run straight past you and grab Ashley. And they don't have an area to exit with her. So they carry it down back where that guy's going. I don't know where the hell he was going. Pretty sure he comes back to grab Ashley in a minute. But uh, yeah, they sort of carry her back down that way, making it really easy to save her in this area. And they really don't care about you too much. Most of the enemies just want to grab her for some reason. It's really strange, but whatever. Let's take out this dude. All right. We got a boot knife, which is actually really nice. We didn't have much in the way of knives. So I'm waiting for that next trebuchet bullet to hit from up there. Keep an eye on it. You can sort of see it coming down. Make sure it's obviously not going to land on you. When it hits again, sort of before the bridge, we can run across it, whip out the shotgun, blast this guy in the face, and then get on the cannon and take out the two remaining trebuchets. Be careful of any enemies that are getting too close. You can see that guy running across. You want to be ready to jump off the cannon and shoot him in the face. This guy will mutate the whole worm parasite thing. You want to try and wait for their mouth to be open before you shoot. Just because it will do way more damage. Although this guy was being kind of annoying. Taking a little more damage than I wanted him to. But yeah, there we go. He's done with. Open up the door then. We don't have to worry. That is a really consistent strategy, and it's a lot easier than it looks. Give it a go, and you won't struggle too much. So this guy was getting a little close again. He just wants Ashley. He doesn't really care about us too much. And they walk really slowly, these guys, for some reason. So we could just use the cannon to take them out, save a little bit of ammo. Yeah, be ready to hop off the cannon and just look around you to make sure no one's around. Sometimes an enemy will survive and get close. We're going to take out these blue medallions with the cannon also. It's a bit overkill, but it saves us wasting ammo. There's the two. And there's one behind us as well, right there. There's a little bit of loot we need to get in this area, so... Let's go ahead and grab the loot these guys dropped. And drop down into this area where we would originally have to go to shoot the chain bag. But that little shortcut's really useful, just shooting it through the window. Let you get to the cannon nice and early, saves a lot of hassle in this area. So when we get here, smash open this barrel and come around here and up the ladder. There's another blue medallion down to our left that we want to look down and shoot. Right there. Nice. And we've got a box here. I think this always has rifle ammo in it, so you really want to get that. We need ammo for the water hall that's coming up in a little while. It's also why we bought the Broken Butterfly, because we've got the Gyarados before that, and it's really useful for taking him out. Elegant Bangle, right there. Grab that. Come through the door then, and pretty much just snag up any remaining loot that the enemies have left. Rifle ammo there. And I think there's a bag of money. Yep, potatoes. Beautiful. And also that guy we sniped earlier on in the section. Right there. There's a couple of barrels in this area. Sorted. Did I get that last blue medallion? I don't think I did. Or did I? It's right next to where we got the bangle. If you didn't get it, go and get it. Yeah, it's literally... I might have left it behind, but it's right next to where the bangle is. I'm not entirely sure if I got it or not, but... Yeah, it's literally just to the left of that chest where we picked up that treasure a minute ago. Alright, so when we go to this cutscene here, back up and... Shoot this guy. He's the one guy that spawns behind you. I completely whiffed that shot though, which is obviously not what you want to do. We got lots of pistol ammo, man. So just sort of spam it out a little bit here. And if you back up to the door that I'm going to right now and head out of it, this will give you a clear line of sight if Ashley gets grabbed, which is probably going to happen here. But also these guys are kind of stupid and they'll only run up to a certain point with this door. Like, if you come back to here where you blew up the door, they won't progress past this point. So you can sort of make them come out, shoot them in the back a little bit. And in this chapter, we need all the help we can get, because it's absolutely terrible when we get to Vortal with the amount of archers that are there. And these guys are very, very annoying. Dudes with the shields. Pretty much the only way to take out these guys head on is either to use a bunch of ammo or blast them with the shotgun. And we do not want to waste our shotgun ammo right now. We want to keep it for as long as we possibly can because of water hall. So only use it if you really, really have to. Okay. 
I'm trying to just make a hole in the shield here and stun this guy up. I've got plenty of handgun ammo. We've got like 70 odd. So hopefully we can deal with him. There we go. Alright, so let's come around here then. And in this room we've got a couple of pickups along with a yellow hub. Let's smash this open. Tell Ashley to climb up. Okay. There you go. And while she's climbing up and opening the door, we can loot up a little bit. So we've got a small key we can use here for this drawer. It's got a gold bar in it. It's worth a little bit of money. And over on the opposite side of this area is a cabinet with the yellow herb in it. Again, uh, I know I've mentioned this a few times, but I don't use any yellow herbs throughout this run. I can understand why you would if you are using them. Just bear in mind, you're going to have to make up the money somewhere that I'm using when I sell those. But, uh, you know, it's not impossible to get through the game without using yellow herbs, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But, uh, yeah, maybe with the spinels, the stuff you get with the spinels, you can make it up. But so far, it's probably about 40 or 50k extra I've gotten from the yellow herbs. All right, so we've got a treasure here we can grab. Stuff in here. I know, I think I mentioned this already, but if you have, if you are looking for a more easy to follow run, like a more casual run, I have done one, it's longer. It's like uh, five hours or so, but it is there. It'll be linked in the description if that's something you're looking for. Maybe you can compare strategies between the two runs and see what I was doing. Okay, so let's grab the dungeon key. And turn around. We're going to drop down here. We'll be crouched when we gain control of Leon after this cutscene. But just turn around and only uncrouch when you come through this door. And then you can sprint through. Come around here. Go to the left. Just sort of wait here for a second. He'll come sprinting in and run past you. As soon as he does, you'll want to follow him. And magnum him in the back. Use that broken butterfly. It should take one broken butterfly shot. And I think two sniper shots to kill him with our current setup. So don't miss your shots. I'm pretty sure this took me a minute to do the fight because I couldn't get the shot on him. I'm just doing my best to avoid getting too close. If he looks like he's walking in your direction, obviously you want to just walk away. These guys are very annoying to deal with. There is a glitch you can use for this part of the game that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, called the door glitch that you can just completely skip all of this and go straight to the water hall, but uh, yeah, I'm not using glitches in this run. I'm trying to do everything legit. Alright. There we go, that's one. I'm just waiting for the right moment here is really key. Obviously, it's difficult to avoid getting smacked by him because he's so big and fast on this difficulty. But uh, one thing to remember is you can parry his attacks. So if he is getting close, you can maybe get the parry off if you're feeling lucky. Alright. Oh. God, it's tense. Pretty sure for this last shot I had to walk around a bunch. It was frustrating to deal with. For this video, I had to run at this point because he was getting too close. It's always an option. If you haven't played Resident Evil 4 before, these guys can't see you, basically. They can only hear you. And that's why you see me walking rather than running everywhere. They are very, very annoying. He did not want to show me his back. I've got to shoot that weak point. Oh, there we go. Lovely. And don't get too close while he's dying either, because he can still hit you during this animation. There we go. Nice. There's a section later in the game where we have to deal with two of those guys. And, uh... Yeah, when you start getting to the point where you get heavy grenades... Don't use heavy grenades on anything but uh, the areas that I do. If you are following this guide, do not do not waste heavy grenades. They're very useful for skipping big fights and big uh, parts of the game. So just make sure you save them. Alright. So, some more handgun bullets that I left behind right there. And... Okay, so this is a very long chapter, again, but it's mostly action, to be honest. There's a lot of puzzles, but there's a ton of action in this chapter. It's, yeah, like I mentioned before, it can be a tricky one to deal with. I don't think it's as hard as the previous chapter, though, because that's basically two boss fights. 
In this one, there's just a lot of normal enemies, and as long as you've, you know, got plenty of ammo, you should be fine, and you... That first section seems intimidating, but it's actually pretty easy. It's really scripted. It's the next part of the chapter that's really difficult in Waterhall, just because there's so many enemies, and you need to make really good use of your ammo. Very, very tricky to sort out. I know a lot of people in this run, or doing this run, have probably found themselves in a situation where they're looking for a guide, maybe, and they're, they've got no ammo. One thing I will say, and you probably won't want to do it, is your best bet if you're in that situation and you're really struggling to get through it. Obviously, you can keep plugging along and try your best to get through a section you're stuck on, but your best bet sometimes is just to completely restart your run. Uh, just because it's going to be a real struggle for you to find ammo, you know. Sometimes the game will be nice, and if you kill an enemy, they'll drop ammo. But a lot of the time, it's not going to be enough. Especially for sections like this one. There are certain points in the game where you can just run past enemies. And I'll try to... If there's a section that you're really struggling with, like Waterhall, which is coming up. I played it really safe, and I killed all the enemies. Viper in this box, by the way. Be ready for that. Um... Because there's a lot of archers in Waterhall, and they can just destroy my health with one bullet. So, yeah, I take everyone out in Waterhall, but you can run through it. If you've got flashbangs, there are strategies you can use just to run through it. Um, I'm going to mention this now because I am going to put together a speedrun guide for this game, even though I feel like, you know, more or less we're going pretty fast here. Not ridiculously fast, but pretty fast. Um... Problem is with the speedrun for this category, for professional any percent, is that there's a lot of glitches that console players can't do. Like legitimately, or well, maybe they can, but they're extremely difficult to pull off on console. Specifically the door glitch, uh, because you you kind of have to spin, spin around really fast to do it, and that's very hard to do on a controller. I know there is a technique to it, but I know that there's some areas that I, th I think can't be done on controller. I could be wrong, though. I'm not sure. Maybe people have found a way. I know this, there is some sort of way to do it, but I don't think it's the same. And there's some door skips that people can't do. Alright. So we snagged up a little bit of extra loot then. We went down and got the golden hourglass. Coming up to Waterhall then. Um, keep an eye on your saves. I know I've mentioned this before, but... Uh, yeah, if your save number is too lower than the chapter you're on, like let's say you're on chapter 7 and you've only saved 5 times, you can get away with another save. There's a save point in one of the rooms next to us. But you kind of want to be aiming to be at least one save below the chapter you're on. So if you're on chapter 7, you want to have had 6 saves so far, and so on. You don't want to get to a point later in the run where you've got to complete 3 chapters without saving, because that will just be a bit of a headache. Alright, so let's go and whip out the sniper here, get ready. When you come in here, two snipers ahead of us, or those two archers, they won't react to you, so you can just sit back here and take them out. And then we're going to head to our left, reload the snipe, smash up this vase, we've got some sniper ammo, which is really nice, some handgun, handgun ammo on the side. Try to hit multiple enemies with that one shot, and then whip out the shotgun when you get closer. These enemies will kind of ignore you and just run past you at first, and they'll sort of double back and come back to you. I'm going to use the shotgun here just to take out a couple of enemies. And we've got to be ready to take out this archer because she can just do mega damage. Using a grenade to clear out a few enemies that have grouped up there. And then shooting this guy in the ass cheek to get him to drop Ashley. Kind of the best strategy here. I actually have Ashley on the wrong setting. She's set to stay far away from us. But we need her closer. That will keep her safer. I should have done that, but it's my mistake. Oh well, she'll be fine. Again, I'm looking out for these archers that show up on the balconies. There's, I think, two more now. Yeah, there's also two on the balconies above me, which is why I'm sort of tucking in down here on the right. I feel like this is a really easy, safe place to sit in just to keep enemies back. Even though you are kind of cornered if anything gets too close. If, you, if you're in the middle, stuff just comes from multiple directions, which can be really difficult to deal with. All right. Couple more enemies then. Let's get rid of these guys. Quick roadhouse to the face. We 
I have dealt with all the enemies that are in this area. There are two more archers above us. Don't haphazardly run into the middle of this area because the odds are they're going to hit you. I like to stay here underneath and you can pick a couple of shots on them. I'm using the handgun, although it's kind of difficult to hit this shot. Not easy at all. You can see it looks like my cursor is over this guy's head, but it just keeps missing. If you want to use the sniper, feel free, but I feel like it's kind of a waste of ammo. You need snipe ammo desperately in this section, so I kind of just like to use the handgun for that a little bit. Hopefully you do. We have a little bit more success than me with hitting that guy because it's kind of frustrating. If you run out into the middle to shoot them, odds are they're going to hit you with a bolt. And you're just going to lose health. Which is definitely not what we want. Alright, so hand grenade. Beautiful, another hand grenade, two hand grenades. Big boy luck right there. A little bit of rifle ammo, just smashing up all these vases. There should be no more enemies on this level. Although there's plenty more below us. So, when we're done here, we're going to go down another floor. I'm just sort of checking around, making sure, we're making sure I haven't missed anything. Okay. I think we collected everything. Yeah, this is another one of those sections that's just incredibly difficult to get through. In general. Alright, so, use the snipe here to pick off some heads. These guys will more than likely all mutate into the parasite things so use the pistol to take out this guy just keep hitting him until he drops he'll probably mutate as well not a lot of fun and then we can just use one flashbang take out the group makes our life 10 times easier and then if you if you're quick enough you can run up and stab or kick this guy i wasn't quick enough so i just backed up and i used this barrel to take him out we don't really have much of an opportunity to use this barrel unless you lure enemies down here but that kind of takes a lot of time so uh i just got that guy over there and shot the barrel all right hang on ammo potatoes let's go ahead and smash open the spars Right, let's go and grab the halo wheel then. Snag up all the loot you can. You may find yourself in a situation in this area where you've got very little ammo, so make sure you're looting as much as I am. Magno, magnum ammo is decent to find, but uh, at this point I'd much rather have some shotgun shells or some rifle ammo. So when you put the halo wheel in, this archer will show up. So before you turn it, be ready to turn and shoot her. Um, and also a guy with a shield shows up. We can get away with turning the wheel and then moving back to deal with him. If you don't sh go and come back and shoot this guy, he'll end up getting behind you. And you've got when you go up the stairs, you've got a bunch of enemies in front of you. And you do not want to get sandwiched in between them. So take out the guy with the shield first down there. And uh, yeah, then come up here. I'm going to deal with this archer first. These are like the worst enemies to deal with by far. Missed that shot because this guy's getting close. Ashley actually helped us out there and let us know enemies were coming. Push back anyone you can. As long as you stay quite low on the stairs here, the archer that's at the back there on the top right shouldn't be able to hit you, so you should be good just to chill and pick off the enemies that are coming. And then we can use the snipe to take him out when we're ready. Just be wary of enemies running up on you because they like to do that in this area. Alright, so this is like a 25 minute chapter, which is really long, but it is what it is. Not a huge amount we can do about it. Alright. Okay, so let's take out this guy at the back. There we go. Also, this guy. Beautiful. And I think that may be everyone. Just be careful of the balconies and the areas above you. Archers like to hide up there and you do not want to get pegged by them right now. Slap on the halo wheel. And we're going up. So the strategy that the speedrunners use to get through here is basically throw flashbangs and run past everything, which does work. But you can find yourself in a very sticky situation when it comes to the archers. They can just end you so fast. So you better be ready to use heals 
if you're going to be doing that. But uh, yeah, also I've seen people looking at the floor and just running past enemies. I think that does something with the archers, like it maybe stops them from attacking you. But uh, yeah, it's up to you. You can experiment a little bit if you want to. If you want to get through this area a lot quicker, it's something you can do. The strategy I've used to get through, though, is actually a really consistent strat. Works really well. Um, just need to worry about enemies getting in your face and archers. That's pretty much it. As long as you've got plenty of shotgun ammo, you should be just fine. All right, let's get Ashley up, Ashley up here then and get her to start turning these wheels. I think my accuracy was so bad for this last part of the chapter. I was missing and missing and missing. But all you have to do here really is keep a few enemies away from Leon and protect Ashley. It takes a little while for enemies to, to start coming after Leon. So just focus on the ones that are going after Ashley and you'll be fine. Yeah, I was wasting so many bullets. Yeah, this game isn't hit scan, so you have to lead your shots a little bit, which can be a little bit infuriating. Some of them as well just feel like they're on target and they miss, but you know, whatever. Game says no, I'll just go with what the game says. All right. All right. Get rid of this guy. Back up, mate. And this guy, he can back up as well. And again. She gets grabbed, just do your best to get her dropped. They've got a long way to take her before you get a game over, so should be just fine. So Ashley can actually get hit in this run. Like enemies can hit her and take her down to the ground. I don't think it happened in this run. If it did, it doesn't actually count as a hit in game stats because this game does tell you how many times you get damaged but i'm pretty sure i managed to on each of the chapters we did ashley didn't actually get hit so fairly decent adds to the no damage effect i guess i'm not sure how much of the zero damage taken stuff you can cheese like if the the boat or the mine cart or the jet ski can take damage and that counts as damage onto your chapter playthrough but oh well Right, let's get rid of this guy. Everyone just wants to grab Ashley. I'm also not sure if she gets grabbed here. Yeah, I, I, I hit everything but the enemy there. That was super infuriating. I'm not sure if uh, Ashley gets grabbed here, if the platform she's raising just gets dropped. I'm pretty sure any she's completed stay up, but if one's midway, I'm pretty not sure if it gets dropped or not. All right, so I think I may have crafted some ammo here because I was low on handgun see how much we went through but to be honest the handgun ammo is really really expendable just kind of throwing it away whenever you can if you can use it to take out an enemy or two you, you best to do that because a lot of the enemies we have to push back with like a shotgun or a sniper in tougher areas so it's best to rely on the handgun in areas where you feel like you're safer and more comfortable it's kind of the best way all right Hey, grab all the stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that's pretty much it for chapter 7. We've got a little bit of nothingness to run through now. But yeah, that chapter was really difficult. But no, I, I, I'm still going to stick to my guns and say that chapter 6 was the hardest chapter for me. A lot of the other chapters were tough, but we managed to get through them relatively quickly. Uh, but... This one was a, a bit tricky just because of how long it is, to be honest. Water Hall is a little bit annoying to learn. Any any chapter that has a bunch of archers is super frustrating. But uh, yeah, we just need Ashley to open the door for us and we're on to chapter 8. Okay. You might find yourself in with lack of ammo for chapter 8. But yeah, moving on. Next chapter. Okay, so... Spawning up, you want to shoot down the nest up there because it's got the scratched emerald in it. We can also get a couple of fish out of the water here just to sell. Or you can keep them as cheeky healing items if you're, you know, in need of some. Flash grenades. 
Make sure you craft up a few of those. We will need them. We're going to equip the boot knife or the kitchen knife. We're going to register the broken butterfly to a shortcut here. Just for us. And we also want to grab this rhinoceros beetle that's on this back wall in this little fountain area. Um, or gazebo, whatever it is. Grab that. And uh, yeah, we can sell that. I think it's worth 10k. Grab the scratched emerald. Selling the scratched emerald will give us a bit of money, but it'll also give us a... Uh, it'll give us a... Um, Merchant request completed. Sell the fish, sell the herbs. Uh, I'm selling the viper as well. And I'm going to buy a large resource. I'm going to repair my knife and power up the pistol and the broken butterfly. So I think I only bought one power up for the broken butterfly there. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and head into this room. This room can really suck if you don't have ammo. Um... But we're going to use mainly the Broken Butterfly to deal with this. I'm going to chuck a flashbang over that way. And then hit this guy with one Broken Butterfly shot. And hopefully this will stun up this enemy. Run in. Run all the way around. Watch out for this guy. Broken Butterfly him if he's in your way. And then I think I hit a little collateral here on the two of them. To take out that one guy. And I'm going to use the Magnum to take out the guy with the key item we need. And make sure you grab that of him. There's a treasure right here where he was. And then we can come back up this way, pull out the pistol, and shoot the red barrel to take out this enemy. And watch out for anyone else. Managed to swing around this dude. Nearly had me. When those enemies push you like that. It's a good job that doesn't damage you, because that would have been run-ending. So I'm standing at the top of this ladder and getting off a really cheeky shot on the barrel. You can just about see to take out any enemies that are down here. And I think I'd taken out the majority of the enemies somehow. I don't know how they all managed to die. The archers are still up. But the, the, all the normal enemies seem to have got taken out by that barrel, I think, that are down here at least. Giving me a little opportunity to loot up a couple of boxes. I don't blame you if you just run out of that area. Because it is absolutely horrible to kill that guy. Um, super annoying to do no damage for me, that was. Although there is a strategy... Uh, that I've seen speedrunners use, which involves using the barrels and soups in certain areas. But yeah. Last person I thought I'd run to here. Okay, so grabbing the velvet blue. Different puzzle pieces. There's also a clock in a chest in this room. This is a very short chapter because there's some really cheeky shortcuts that we can use. And it's kind of why I've been saying to keep the grenades you find and only use them uh, pretty much when you see me use them or when absolutely necessary. If you've got no grenades in this chapter, um, you're probably really going to struggle to get through it as fast as I do, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, that's why I've kept them. This chapter can be... Well, big shortcuts can be taken by using grenades in this chapter. Yeah, I think you need at least two. So if you've got two grenades, you're in a good spot. We've got three, so we've got one extra. Little bit of room for error. Small key there. Grab that. We're going to open this up. We want the shotgun out for when we encounter the first parasite that jumps on the guy's back. All right. So when he gets close, shotgun him and just run past. You should be good to do that. Don't worry about fighting him. Just keep going. Shoot the chain bag. And uh, we want to be ready with a flashbang after we shoot the bridge down. So grab up what's in this barrel, shoot the bridge, grab your flashbang. And you want to take a couple of steps onto the bridge before you throw your flashbang. So you kind of get it close to the doorway. There's a parasite in this room and we want to make sure that we take it out. One of those spider looking parasite things. Pull the switch, run through the door, be careful of that guy. That was really close. Get your grenades ready, and you want to sort of take a few steps back from the gate, around about here or so, and then chuck it about there, and that will blow up the chain bag that's on the other side and give us a big shortcut. And then we can shoot this chain bag down, get through, another flashbang into this room. These guys can be really frustrating when trying to do this little trick. So chuck the nade through this window about there. Make sure you don't throw it too low, or it'll just bounce off the window and come back out. And then we're already against the troll. That's a big time save. So duck under there until he throws. And then you want to be really quick through this archway. Shoot this guy that's waiting on the right. Wait here. 
Use the shotgun again to take out this enemy. I just broke the shield and used the pistol to finish him off. We have got a serious lack of shotgun shells right now. So, sort of taking my time right here. I think this was the area that took me the longest because I was playing it really safe with these archers. They're super annoying to deal with. We've got cover right here from the big troll dude. Um, but yeah, we need to take out these archers because they can cause us big problems. Two of them. If you try and approach this drop down, they'll more than likely hit you. If it was just one, we'd probably be able to avoid it. But because there's two, it's really frustrating to do so. All right, so hop down, turn around, pop this guy. Smash the crate, grab whatever's in it, flip the switch. All right, so now that we're real, let's wait a minute. There we go. Hop down, through the door, smash this, and we want to wait for any enemies that are still around. We've got a treasure up there we can grab. Pretty sure it's just a ruby, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, wait around for any enemies that are still here. If they do come into this room, use the barrel to kill them. I think we got lucky and the uh, Gigante had killed them. Alright, so we're going to time this well, run behind the ladder, wait for him to throw. And then go up the ladder. Need to make sure you're timing this well. If you don't, you'll probably end up getting hit by rocks. You see, we just about made it there. Alright, so now that we're through, let's go ahead and use the small key to open this. Okay, ornate beetle. Shoot the chain bag thing. Come up here. And we've got another chain bag so I like to wait here for a second or two and just see what enemies are following me usually a couple enemies will follow you and you kind of want to wait here and take them out if you don't uh, you'll more than likely end up getting hit when you're using the cannon in a little while sometimes there's two maybe even three for me there was just one kind of lucky but just be careful because when you're using this cannon more enemies can show up so take him out with the cannon Beautiful. Use the cannon to open the door and take out these dudes. So yeah, when you're using the cannon, you might want to jump off and just take a look around you. Make sure you're not getting snuck up on, because that can happen. And uh, make sure you take out these guys with the cannon. Save you a little bit of ammo. Make your journey a little bit easier. Smash this open. And uh, that's pretty much it. We just need to leave. So let's hop down. Get out of here. Very quick chapter compared to the last one. That one's actually a really simple chapter using those tricks. Using the grenades to open up the gates. Save so much time. Alright, so let's get out of here. Sorted. We are leaving. Chapter 9 then. Also another pretty easy chapter to be honest. Chapter 9's one of the less tough ones. Sorted. Right, moving on then. Okay, so starting out here, grab the yellow herb that's on the windowsill. Really easy one to miss, to be fair. And uh, a couple of vases in here to smash. Kind of want to collect up ammo if we can. Heavy grenade, make sure you are saving them. Don't use those heavy grenades. We will need them to get some sneaky shortcuts later on in the run. Normal grenades, you could use a little bit more, but I would still hold off. You need to save a couple. And, uh, yeah, heavy grenades as well. Very, very valuable, so just keep hold of those. Make sure you're not using them. And, uh, yeah, a couple of crows we can shoot here. We're not going to pull this first switch until we are on our way back. So just leave it for now, and we'll come back to it when we've pulled the other two. And come around here. Go ahead, smash up these crates. There's a viper in that one, so watch out for that. I like to just try and stab it and then get the other stuff and come back to it. But I actually missed the stab, so it ended up on the floor. So looking around this corner with the snipe, you can snipe this wolf as it's poking its head around the corner. Seems like a difficult shot, but it's really not. All right. Crate here. Grab that. And grab this. First aid spray there. Good for selling. So... We've got these cages of wolves to deal with in this area. 
So when you come around here, break up this crate, and you want to look in and try and look for the dog that's headbutting the uh, the cage. When it headbutts, you want to take the shot at it through the fence there, and you'll hit both wolves, and they won't burst out of the cage, which makes them really easy to deal with. You've got this wolf that jumps through the hedge. Get rid of him. These two wolves as well. This one will jump over, but he's pretty easy to deal with. He's kind of stuck in an animation as you shoot him. Come around here, and we can open this up. We've got the elegant chessboard in here. Nice item to sell. And heading this way, we got the first switch that we're going to pull. Let's head on up. Beautiful. So, Look, the flag's been lowered. thanks Ashley, cheers. Open up the gate then, head on through, we're going to go back to where we just took out that wolf, grab the loot from him, there's also a crate back here. Really I'm just looking for grenades, the reason you want to smash all these crates is just to try and get extra heavy grenades. We need as many as we can come across, but also ammo is super useful at this point just recouping all the ammo we've used in the last couple of chapters through here you can get a lot back if you get some good rng so when you get to here chuck a normal nade at the cage and that will kill two of the wolves one of them will probably still jump out if you turn around quickly and shoot him as he jumps out you can kill him too you kind of want to throw that grenade a little bit earlier if i was you if if you're coming around that corner try and aim it around the corner and just put it next to the cage You'll most of the time take out two and the other one will jump out like what just happened with me. Just be ready to take out that third one. But you want to get into the cage. If you find yourself in a situation where you're um, not breaking the cage open, you kind of want to restart because you need the flash grenade that's inside. Well, it's not completely necessary, but it's nice to get the flash grenade that's inside the cage. There's always one in there. So... Okay, so this chapter is really straightforward, to be honest. There's not a huge amount of risk involved in it. So if you've saved um, at the beginning of this chapter, you should be good to make it all the way through. It's not really too difficult. One of the easier ones, very chill. So when these three guys run in, try to just take shots with the pistol. That's what I do anyway, just take them out with the pistol. Get as many shots on these dudes as you can. And there's one right here as well. I jumped down a little bit too early there. I should have waited for this guy to come forward, really. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Get rid of him. Can shoot this guy in the back as well. And I think there's one still going for Ashley. Ashley. While that's going on, we'll come up here and pull this last switch. This guy has to sort of walk with Ashley all the way around to us, so... This is why we leave the switch till last, because we've just got some time to kill, really. Sometimes if you get lucky, you can kill all of those three guys before they even get to Ashley and she'll just run back to you. We're still trying to be relatively quick here because uh, we need to get out of this area before all the dogs spawn up. Okay, so there's one more. Here he comes. going to come around this corner in a minute. Make sure you don't shoot Ashley, which can happen. There we go. We'd already put a bunch of shots on him, so... Right, here's the dogs. Look out for them. If any get too close, especially the mutated one, if it does run up the stairs after you, get ready to shotgun it back. When you push it back, it should run back into the maze and leave you alone, leaving you free to come up here. Although, to be honest, they shouldn't really come up the stairs. So, shooting this first medallion. We've got a couple of cupboards here to open to get whatever loot's inside. Really hoping for heavy grenades here. Any heavy grenades you get are super useful. Shoot the lantern down that the statue's holding. To get the treasure. I think so far I've got one heavy grenade. We don't need them in this chapter, but it's just good to be looting around for them. I think in total we need probably four or five. Five would make you comfortable. So when you come in here, you can shoot the rat that's in this room. We can get two in this chapter and one in the next. We want to make Ashley sit on the seat you just saw me make her sit at. It's basically the, the chair that has nothing on it. No food or drink, just empty plate and cup. Looks like we figured it out. And in this room, you can find a red herb, a couple of vases to smash. There's also a medallion in between the curtains. There's the herb. There's the medallion. All right. So I'll grab the serpent head on the way out. 
That's our first one sorted. So the next head we're going to get is the lion head, and it's the only one where we've really got to fight. The other one we don't really have to fight much at all. Another medallion in the chandelier, grab that. And let's go ahead and open up these cupboards. Okay. Beautiful. Right, through here. And another vase to smash. We've got some gunpowder that's on the table in the middle of this room. And a small key that's in here. Sorted. So, green hub there, if you want to grab that. We can combine stuff to make a full hub. There we go, I'm going to make a flashbang also, just to make a little bit of space. Shotgun ammo. Okay, so... Come down here then and to the right. And there's another medallion right here. Hop on down. And... You want to collect everything that's in this room, so there's a few vases, a couple of things sitting on the side, large resources there. We've got a hand grenade, beautiful, and a heavy grenade as well. We will take that. So that's two now. Uh, I'm going to have to craft something here because I need to make space. Not sure what I went ahead and did. Maybe just made a flash grenade or two. There we go. Inventory is looking very full right now, but we're going to go and sell some stuff to the merchant very soon. All right, lion head. So, pretty much just keeping your distance. The first two will spawn behind the lion statue. Just go ahead and shoot them, get them on their knees, and then push them back. Watch out for these guys. They've got a crazy reach. One sniper shot with the shot, uh, snipe we have at the moment should take them out. When Ashley throws the flames down, try to lure him over to it, and that'll just give you an easy kick. And you can whip out the snipe and just take him out nice and easy. Thanks, Ashley. Appreciate that. Captain Obvious over there. Alright. So, another one to kick. Yeah, I couldn't really get to that one in time without this dude hitting me, so I just sort of left it. Yeah, if you hurt them over, you can kind of get two of them into the flames, which is really nice. Easy kicks. Managed to get both in one kick there, but you should have time to kick them both. Just don't let them get too close and you'll be fine. With the sniper we've got upgraded right now, one shot in their parasite head will deal with it. So while they're stuck in their animation, they won't go down to their knees, but they'll uh, definitely take damage, so... I should have waited a second for another one to be in the flames there, but I kind of just want to get rid of one. Dealing with two at one time is pretty easy, but dealing with three can make things a little more complicated. Just need to re reload up some weapons. Keeping my distance from these dudes. You can parry them if you need to. Just be careful. Yeah, I think while you're in, a, in the animation of kicking, they won't be able to do damage to you, so... Got kind of lucky there. It was a well-timed kick. And I'm completely whiffing my shots here. My accuracy wasn't too bad throughout this run. I think for most chapters it was between 80 and 90%. You can still see me missing. I'm not sure if hitting like the armor on these guys counts as successful hits. Alright, there's one more down. This guy, this last guy can be a little more complicated. The one with the parasite sticking out its back. You've kind of got to make it swing and get behind it. And shoot it. There we go. Easy. Just give him a kick. And a shot. Beautiful. Alright, so make sure you get all the loot off loot off those guys. They drop spinels, spinals, a lot of the time. So you'll get a bunch for free off of them. Alright, Ashley, shut up. Alright, let's uh pull these switches. You don't uh, want to forget the cubic device that's in the next area. Make sure you grab that. It's just in a chest in this next area. You don't need it to progress in the game, but we need it to get a couple of items that we want, so make sure you grab it. There's also a rat in this corridor. It'll be running around in this area. Make sure you get that. Yeah, the uh, merchant requests we're doing are kind of just on our path, so I tried to make them easy to follow. We can get two of the rats in this chapter. 
and the third one will be on the next chapter. Now that we got the cubic device, come in here and use it to open this box. I think it's a butterfly lamp? I can't remember. Not 100% on that, but there we go. Get that open. Yeah, butterfly lamp. And if you need to make space, now would probably be the time. Just sell him all of the treasures we can, all of the ones that don't have jewels inside of them. Sell him the vipers and whatever stuff is taking up space that we're not going to use. And I'm not sure what I was going to do here. I was probably just figuring out what exactly I wanted to do. I don't really think I need much. I bought a large resource. With the resources that become available, I think it's in the pre in chapter eight. It might be chapter seven. But you want to keep an eye on those because in this difficulty, he can cap out on them, and he, he can only carry three at a time. And I'm pretty sure, like chapter to chapter, he gets more. So, let's say if you get to three out of three and you don't buy any, the next chapter you've kind of wasted one. So you want to be buying them along the way. So when we get to here, in this room, don't run too far along this platform, throw a flashbang to about there from where I was standing, and you can stun these guys long enough to get across here without them lowering the platform. And yeah, we're good now to go ahead. I think you can use a grenade to do that as well. Another heavy grenade there, beautiful. Last medallion is right there for us, that's six out of six now. And uh, we can just go ahead and leave. We need to take out these dudes. Be ready. You want to take them out and try and move quick through this area. If you don't, then more enemies can come running up the stairs and attack and grab Ashley. It's not so bad if they attack you, but if they grab Ashley, it can just cause a real mess in that section. So just be ready to blast those guys away with the shotgun and then get out of there as fast as possible. Okay, and that skips a massive fight. There's a big fight in that room that's really frustrating to do. I actually, in my previous run, I didn't do that, and it's a really useful strategy. It can be really difficult to get through that room without doing that. So, yeah, that kind of makes this chapter a lot easier. We've just got the little section with Ashley now. And, uh, yeah, this really isn't too difficult at all. So we're running forward, just grabbing the lamp. Okay. So through we go. Swinging a right under here. Because we know the solution to the puzzle in this area, uh, we don't have to do a big chunk of the stuff with Ashley, but the solution to this is 7 p.m. Unprofessional and hardcore. I think on standard and assisted, it's 11.04. It's either 11.04 or 10.04, one of the two, but it's 7 for us, unprofessional. So when that opens up, we're going to get moving. Down we go. Straight into the elevator then. This is a really straightforward section, to be honest. Nothing too much to worry about. Next chapter has a very difficult section to do no damage, but it isn't too difficult to get through. And you can play it a lot safer than I do if you want to. We'll talk about that when we come to it, though. I really feel like this is another one of those chapters where you, you only really need to save at the beginning of it. You don't need to save midway or anything, which is what you want to do with quite a few chapters, but there are some chapters where saving before a certain part can be really sort of useful and definitely needed. If you want to play it really safe, you can stretch out your saves more and more, but I'd recommend if you just want that S+, plus using all your saves, but just using them wisely. I kind of just wanted to make uh, chapter to chapter stuff. The only, I think the only section I didn't do that, like I said, was with the village at the beginning because the strategy I was using... Um, actually, that was a really hard section to beat no damage. Doing the village no damage was really stressful. That and chapter 6 sort of stand out as the hardest parts of this run. Although m most of it wasn't too bad, but there were still sections that were horrible. Chapter 11 also was not a lot of fun at all. A very difficult chapter to get through. Alright, so switching this lamp for the one at the back here. Switching this one with this one. And then with the one we just grabbed, we're just putting it over here. And that'll give us the emblem. Let's go ahead and grab that. Very nice. 
So as soon as you grab the emblem, just get out of there. You'll be fine if you just keep running. Go, go, go. Nearly done with this chapter. What we need to do is get out of this area with Ashley. A few nights to run past and we're done. Kind of a slow section though. I, These are some of my least favourite sections in Resident Evil games when you're kind of made to play as a character that can't defend themselves. I just feel like that's the nature of Resident Evil. I mean, it's a nice touch and it's from the original game, so, you know, it's cool that it's in there. It's just, I feel like they're my least favourite sections. They kind of just feel a bit boring, to be honest. Resident Evil 2 has that section with Sherry. It's just kind of a bit meh. Resident Evil 3 is just a bad... Oh, when we're coming up here, you want to stick to the left and then swing to the right to get past this guy. You can lure him down the stairs and run around him that way if you want to, but it's just easy enough if you just run up on the left and when you get close, go to the right and you'll get around him nice and easy. Swing right through the door here. Come this way. And uh, duck under this. Keep going. Around the knights. You should be fine just to run through him in the path I just did. That's it. We just need to go and slap the emblem in and we're out of here. Yeah, Resident Evil 3 wasn't the best game, but at least it had the section with Carlos, and at least with Carlos you had guns and stuff. It was kind of a fun section. Just not a great game in general, though. Alright, down we go. And uh, yeah, that's chapter 9. Lovely. Very nice. Alright. So... Skipping this conversation with Adel. We need to go and visit the merchant real quick. We're going to reload our snipe. Looking a little bit empty. Alright, tuning up the pistol to its uh, full power. And just getting the gunpowder there as well. We're going to send the broken butterfly to storage. I'm going to register these grenades to a shortcut. I've put them on number six. And just making a couple of flashes. And we're on our way. So where the broken butterfly was, I've just put the heavy grenades. And... We're on our way. So this is the first chapter that we need the heavy grenades. You need at least two. And you need one normal grenade. So. Let's go. Yeah, so. Five heavy grenades is kind of what you need. Six makes you comfortable. Four is doable. But yeah, five is kind of where you want to sit throughout this run. Taking out these bugs right here. There's a big skip in this area you can use just to get through that door and stop yourself from running all the way around here by using a glitch on the door but we're not using glitches so we're going to play legitimately we need to kill those bugs because they can just grab you and hit you really easily so we're smashing that barrel that's in front of the door we got a first aid spray here whatever's in this cupboard we're going to take shotgun shells for us smash this barrel also get what's in there and uh, then we're moving on so if you want to play this area safe you kind of make sure want to make sure you have the tmp and you just sit back and tmp all of the bugs that come at you but uh i don't like to do it that way we're going to come down the stairs chuck a flash about here that'll stun up all of these bugs that show up and just get moving so yeah this this chapter can go horribly wrong in this area it's really a difficult section to do no damage to do fast at least so shotgun in these two bugs throw in another flash right here That'll stun up the bugs around us and hopefully the ones above us as well. I didn't manage to get the one that was in camouflage right here. So I'm going to shoot him. Shoot this guy as well. That one that just flew up in the back will always show up there. I'm going to throw a flash and then pull the switch. Make sure the flash goes off before you pull the switch. Because uh, it will cut out the animation if you don't do it that way. Shoot this guy that comes out of the hole. Any bugs that are in your way here, you kind of just want to shotgun... Again, the, the TM, TMP can work for this section. If you buy it for quite cheap, you can uh, use it to stun up the bugs here quite quickly. I was just using the shotgun because I didn't really want to buy the TMP. Um, so pistol in that guy, getting ready with another flashbang. Chucking it here will stun everybody up. And uh, we got this one guy behind us that's getting a bit cheeky. So again, we want to throw another flash. Just before we do this threw it right there on the ledge that managed to stun the ones below and the one that was right behind me pulling the switch and up and down so many flashbangs get used in this room it's actually really annoying but uh we needed them otherwise that section takes forever to fight all of the bugs takes so long all right so 
grab whatever loot you can around here. I think there's a vase I missed down at the bottom, but I'm pretty sure I grab it later. Hang on ammo. Shoot the chain bag. We need to go back over here for that. That didn't hit. There we go. Alright. Two chain bags to hit. So, this room is probably the trickiest part of this. Well, no, I think the bugs are probably trickier, but this is kind of tricky too. Skip your little cutscene here and shoot the one Gyarados in the background once. Stand about here and wait a couple of seconds, then shoot the bell. Run up here and shotgun this guy. And we're hoping that the two Gyarados will run over to the bell and then we can use the heavy grenades to deal with them. If you try in this and it doesn't work, try shooting the Gyarados as you enter one more time on the left. So like I said before, that's three heavy grenades and uh, a normal grenade should finish him off. But yeah, they didn't die for me. There we go. I must have messed up my throws. I don't think they were in the right position, but yeah, one shotgun shot and a sniper shot did them in. That'll do. Get them rid of. If you get better positioning than I do, one thing you might want to try is shooting the Gyarados on the left when you enter the room. I know I shot him once. I think you might need to shoot him twice. Either that or wait a little bit longer on the bell. Uh, that way they're both free. Basically, you want to get them free and then shoot the bell. But yeah, it might have been my fault. Because kind of what happens is you shoot three times and then they break free. So it might be worth shooting... Um, one more time on that one on the left. So we're going to loot up this room. Make sure specifically you grab the flashbang that's on the table down the bottom. There's a few bits of loot in here. There's like uh, some mines and some bolts and stuff we can just sell on. Unless you like using those weapons. Just make sure you grab everything out of the room basically. Extra bolts. Yeah, just worth getting the extra loot to sell on. Alright, so... Sticking these unicorn horns in. Still got a little bit more of this chapter. We're only about halfway through. Excuse the pause there. Sometimes I think you can skip these cutscenes, but you can't. You can't. Alright. So heading on through then. So when we gain control, just turn around and head this way. We don't get attacked in this area. Just keep moving. We don't really get attacked until we go through the tunnel. There's a glitch here that you can use to skip through the wall and end up pretty much at the stairs. You don't have to fight any of the bug enemies, but uh, again, we're not using glitches. We're doing this all glitchless. That is the plan. All right, so let's go ahead, push through here, underneath there. Right, so I have to gain in control here. We're going to go over to our left. Look out for the green eyes. That's my advice. I use the shotgun here. If you see any green eyes coming towards you, just whip out the shotgun and shoot them. These guys are super frustrating. I couldn't hit this guy, but you can shoot him. You can sort of see their ripples moving around in the water, but... Yeah, just look out for their eyes when they're coming towards you. There will be a few of them. I think this is the wrong way. You actually want to go left when you drop down. All right. Following this path around. You'll know you're going the right way because you'll start getting attacked by these guys. I know they're camouflaged, but they're actually kind of easy to see. I feel like this area would have been much more difficult, but also a little bit better if you couldn't see their eyes. I feel like it would have been a cool touch if you could only see the water moving. It would have made it very frustrating, but uh, it would have been cool. Alright, so... I'm not sure what I did here for space. Probably made some ammo. Yeah, shotgun shells. There we go. Alright, so... Make sure that you grab the elegant crown from this body. Do not forget that. Combining that with the correct gems makes it worth 100,000. So, make sure you grab that. In this room, there's a yellow herb as well. Let's go ahead and grab that. So I think around this point, yellow herbs should stop really being as important to sell. You can for extra money, but uh, yeah, like I mentioned several times, we have way more money than we're probably going to need for the rest of this run. We need to buy um, 
this a rocket launcher here for Vertigo. We buy a rocket launcher for... Um, we don't buy one for Salazar because we use the golden eggs for him. But we, I think we buy three. We buy one for Krauser and we buy one for Sadler. And one thing to take into account is at the end of the run, when you fight Sadler, you can sell your weapons to get the money back to get the rocket launcher. And you don't actually need weapons to fight Sadler at the end. But if you're following along with the upgrades with me, you'll have more than enough. I think here I might have... Um, because I don't have an emerald. If you remember in the cabin, I told you to grab the emerald, if you can, from the brute that we killed. Um, yeah, doing that will make the crown worth 100k by putting one of each, by putting a sapphire, a yellow diamond, an alexandrite, an emerald, and a red beryl into the crown. It's worth 100k. But if you don't have that, if you put the three red beryls and two rubies into it, it makes it worth like 98 or something like that. And I put... One of each color into the butterfly lamp, and I think two into the, the bracelet, the elegant or the elegant bangle. And yeah, just selling those on for a bit of extra cash. I mean, you can see everything I'm selling here gets us like 156k. We've already got 64k. Um, I've got way more loot than we need, you know. So you could even if you wanted to, if you are following along with me accurately, you could tune up your stuff probably way more than I do. Uh, we do end up with more stuff than we need. Didn't have the space here for the rocket launcher, so I ended up crafting, I think, a flashbang, and that gave me enough space. I made the space here somehow, though. I'm not sure why I did. I may have discarded or stored something. I was kind of like, hmm, how am I going to put this in there? Yeah, it's not happening. Did not have the space. Not sure what I sold here or what I did. Let's have a look. I sold my herbs. A couple of green herbs. See if that fits now. There we go. Beautiful. I do like that merchant dialogue line. Where are you going to put this? Your pocket. Alright. So, now that we got the rocket launcher, that makes this fight really easy. To be honest, getting past this guy without the rocket launcher, if you do find yourself stuck where you can't buy one right now, all you really need to do is just run around, avoid him. Stun him with the showers. Just keep doing that. Don't even try to fight him because you're just going to waste all your ammo until the elevator arrives. can be kind of tricky, but uh, using the rocket launcher just makes it so much easier and a lot less hassle as well. Right. So all of the boxes in this area tend to have good loot in them. It's another good reason, reason to uh, take out Vertigo is because the boxes usually have heavy grenades, which is really nice. Come in here then, pull the switch, head back, go through. I'm going to go forward here, over to where we can pull the switch to activate the elevator. Make sure you're ready to evade this guy twice. Once there, and once when we enter this room. We turn this corner, he'll attack us again. Alright, shotgun shells there on the barrel. Come around here and pull the switch. So when you come around here, he'll jump in, turn back on yourself and go around this way. Press the button right here. Whip out the rocket launcher when he walks into the shower and make sure he's frozen. And that'll kill him. Sorted. Take the monocle from his body. Worth a little bit of cash. And we can leave this room now. So make sure before you leave this area that you loot up the side rooms, one specific side room has like three or four crates in it that are just loaded with loot. I think the developers are actually trying to be nice and give you some ammo for fighting them if you found yourself stuck. Also, there's a green herb back here, and then they left that behind. Now that we've used the rocket launcher, we've got a bunch of space in the inventory. If you don't know, if you haven't played this game yourself, and you just watch him for enjoyment, uh, the rocket launcher is only one use. You need to you buy it, use it once, and then it disappears from your inventory completely. If you want to get the infinite ammo rocket launcher that Resident Evil games tend to have, you need to do it on a new game plus playthrough. And you need to buy it from the merchant. It costs like 2 million. And the rocket launcher costs different amounts depending on the difficulty that you're playing on. On standard and assisted, I think it costs like 50,000. Maybe I think it might be 60 on standard. And on uh, I think on hardcore, it's somewhere like 80. But on professional, it's 160. I haven't actually played hardcore, so I don't know. It may still be 160, but 
Yeah. Obviously, it's because it just one-shots every boss in the game. Like, any boss you come across, you hit it with a rocket launcher and it dies. So, it kind of makes it a little bit unfair if you can just buy it for 50k. Because, to be honest, there's so much loot in the game. I am picking up, like, a, a decent amount of loot throughout the game. Uh, if we could buy them for 50k, we'd be laughing on this difficulty. But, yeah, there's chapter 10. Sorted. Still keeping up that no damage, man. Okay, so this chapter isn't the funnest just because of how long it is. Let's go ahead and visit the merchant, buy a couple of resources. We need a couple of large, a couple of small. Just try to stay on top of the resources just because, uh, like I said, he can cap on them. Like if he has three out of three and you progress a chapter, you'll miss out on getting one, basically. So I just like to make sure he's not full. Sorry about talking over this conversation. Flash grenades. Let's go. Accidentally moving the rifle. Let's not go. Alright, so... There's not actually a huge amount of dialogue between characters in the actual gameplay. So, if you're waiting for save instructions, you definitely want to save at the beginning of this chapter. Um, again, make sure you're keeping your saves one below the chapter you're on. So if you're on chapter 11, you want to have 10 saves or below. Alright, so when we come in here, chucking the flash, we are shotgunning that guy when we're coming up the stairs a second ago. You want to be quick getting to that switch and pulling it so that we can get downstairs and open this box because it's got good loot in it. Grab all that loot and open the door and then leave. Sometimes you can get really unlucky in this room and end up stepping on a dynamite when you walk out of that room. Uh, but as this section's right at the start of the chapter, it doesn't hurt to get a little bit riskier. Use the barrel to keep the chainsaw lady away. God knows how... That must be the Bella sister we didn't kill earlier, I'm guessing. It would be really cool if you actually killed them both, if she just didn't show up here, but yeah, it's whatever. So, shotgunning those guys back, try to hit both of them by separating the spread of the shotgun across two enemies. Shotgun that one guy as we come in, grab the dynamite, run over to these barrels, throw a flashbang, loot the stuff, and then leave. When you come over here, go to the left, grab what's in this chest. If you want to leave this, it's completely understandable. Um, but if you're quick about it, you can grab it. And like I said, because this is, at, this is at the beginning of the chapter, it's not too painful to retry that section and get it right. Um, yeah, being quite quick of everything there can be a little bit daunting at first, but once you've done it a few times, it's pretty straightforward and pretty scripted. Not a huge amount of RNG that can happen there. I actually kicked the enemies on the way out. If you can avoid doing that, do that. Because, yeah, it just kind of makes them recover faster. If you leave them flashbanged, they'll sort of stand there stunned for a few seconds. But if you kick them, especially the chainsaw sister, she just stands back up really quick. So, good idea to leave her stunned. All right, grab whatever's in these barrels. Let's go deal with Double Gigante. This fight kind of sucks. But it just pretty much costs us flashbangs. So what we're going to do is run all the way across here, across the grid thing. Wait for the naked dude to turn around. Chuck a flashbang at him so that he gets stunned around there or so. And then go stand kind of close to the switch. Wait for him to turn around. Make sure he is out of his stun animation. Don't throw as soon as he comes out of the stun animation. Or he won't get stunned again when you throw another flash. Kind of make. I just wait till he turns around. And then throw another flash, pull the switch, and he's gone. One thing you can do here is use the switch to sort of slow this guy down. If he's focusing on Luis and he stands on this thing, if you pull the switch, he'll sort of back off it. And that'll buy you a couple of seconds of him, like, rushing you. But after that, he'll kind of stay off it. So I like to try and use that switch to block him a little bit, just to keep him away from me. Because he can't pass through it, obviously. So now we just have to kind of last a few seconds while Luis runs off to go do stuff. I like to keep my distance. I feel like when you're further away from these guys, it uh, it's obviously, I mean, obviously it's easy to avoid them, but they gain distance on you really quick. 
if you tuck in by this box right here or this sort of platform if he does that charge attack he can't hit you and I'm pretty sure if he does a stump attack he can't hit you either um, but yeah I was really close to getting smushed here and just managed to avoid the stump coming over this way we need to lure this guy over to Luis and then wait for him to be on the uh, great thing and then shoot the dynamite not the easiest of shots even if you've just got his little toe on the great he'll go straight in it's kind of weird that literally five percent of his body is on the great but he still falls in but yeah that does work really consistently pretty decent Okay, so let's go and help Luis over this thing. I think we can get through here. How's it look? All right, and in we go. There. It's open. This is another one of those places you can use the door skip that I talked about, but that one seems really difficult to do. I've never been able to do that one well. Well, we aren't doing any of those on this run. Not a single one. So one of the reasons this chapter... Oh god, here we go. Chit chat time. Alright. We done? Yeah, one of the reasons this chapter is just feels so horrible is because of the minecart section. But again, this is why I told you to maybe try and hold off your first save until Chapter 3 before Del Lago. That will make things a hell of a lot easier for you. If you could get your first save before Del Lago, and your second save at the end of Chapter 4, you're in a really good spot for saves along the way. And it just could kind of set you up for later in the game. Yeah, but there's a, a section in this you have to deal with all the bugs. That's not too difficult, but dealing with Krauser after that is kind of really annoying. Um, the problem is, because I was working chapter to chapter, I pretty much I had to do all of this in one go before saving. So you're talking, you know, the dynamite section, at the El Gigantes, at the minecart. The bugs and then Krauser in one section and the hardest part of it all is Krauser and obviously that's right at the freaking end. He's not that difficult to beat but doing it without getting hit is really frustrating. You've got to get all your, your parries on point and stuff and just make sure you're not screwing up at all. But uh, yeah just beating him isn't that hard but to be fair like I said if you've sorted your saves out into a comfortable position and you're on around save 9 now, if you're on save 9 or lower, save before Krauser. That's my advice, just save before him, and if he does a bunch of damage to you and you end up using a few heals, you can just load the game and you're fine. One thing I know most of you probably already know, uh, but just in case you don't, if you are messing up sections, you might want to quit out to the main menu, and load your save otherwise the time if you if you load the game from the you are dead screen it increases your time basically the time from your last load uh, to when you died will be added to your time so when you're loading the game you always want to back out to the main menu and then load the save I'm sure that's kind of common knowledge but just in case I mentioned that in my previous guide too definitely something you should take into consideration Alright, so this is a bit of a longer chapter, but it's, it's I think, let me see. Uh, so the chapter's about, probably around the area of 20 minutes, and a good 7 or 8 of those minutes is minecart stuff. And it just feels so incredibly long because of the minecart section. If it wasn't for the minecart section in this chapter, it really wouldn't be so bad if it was just... Dynamite, Gigante, Bugs, Krauser, it would be fine, but the, the minecart bit just stretches it out, and the stupid thing about it is it's the easiest part by far. Alright, so we're shotgunning this guy. 
get rid of him. Watch out for the dynamite person. Come on, you turn around. Quick bop bop. And he's gone. Alright, lovely. Open this up. Flagon. We've got a couple of crates in here to get. There's a red hub by the door. I'm not sure if I've already grabbed it. But yeah, it's just next to where that chest is with the flagon in it. Get this guy's loot as well. Yeah, red herbs are actually really rare too in this run. Probably not. I don't think they're as rare as yellows. But they are still really rare. Really don't come across them very often. You can get that case that makes them drop more frequently. But I feel like in professional it's more beneficial to have ammo drops. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, if you are on good pace, you could probably visit the shooting range and, uh, get some charms to help you out with a little bit of time spare. You can work it out so that you did it, but bear in mind that the, the charms are seeded. So that basically means that you're always going to get the same charms, which kind of sucks on your particular play playthrough. It changes each playthrough. So you want to hit this guy with a few shots coming up here. We'll talk a little bit about this chainsaw guy in a minute. Basically here, don't miss your shots. That's kind of what it comes down to. But yeah, the charms are seeded. So you can't just uh, get, I don't know, get a charm you don't want and then reload the game and hope you get different ones. The charms you get are the charms you get. That's kind of just the way it goes. It will change each playthrough. If you're familiar with games that do that sort of thing, you might understand what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, it basically means you can't brute force the charms that you want. Right, so... When you get out here, you want to try and hit this uh, red barrel. I missed it completely. It is actually a difficult shot. You need to lead your shot a little bit. And if it gets up there, you ain't hitting it. But what that does is... I mean, you might think, well, what's the point in that? If you hit it, it does a ton of damage to the chainsaw guy. Uh, or to his cart. Because I feel like it's easier to destroy his cart than it is to kill him. If you miss it though, like I did, you're going to want to shoot the chainsaw guy through that little part there. Take out these guys quickly and you can get more shots on him. But if you focus his cart until you really have to actually shoot him, you can destroy his cart like that. But if you hit that barrel that I was shooting at earlier, um, yeah, he, he'll be really weak by the time he re-emerges. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, seeded charms. So yeah, you, you can't... I, I don't even think it's connected to the coins that you use. It doesn't matter what coins you put into the machine. You'll always get the same charms, which is kind of bullshit because some of the coins are like gold and you have to sweat way more to get them. You would think you'd get better charms for doing that, but I really don't think it is. I think it's just down to luck. So, yeah, you can't manipulate what charms you get, basically. So if you are thinking, oh, I'll load and save it until I get the charm I want first try, it doesn't work that way. All right, so my least favorite enemy in the game is definitely the bugs. I hate the bugs. They are so annoying and they can hit you with so much BS. Other enemies are more predictable. Bosses are obviously a different breed, but the bugs are so frustrating because they move so quickly. So when you come down here, you'll want to stick to your left and not deal with this enemy. Sometimes you'll get one bug that spawns really early and it'll screw up your run. It won't really make a massive difference to you, but it'll make Luis really slow. So you have to wait for him at the end. So watch your back when you come, from, come up to this area. Sometimes there'll be one there, sometimes there won't. Shoot the bug that's on the wall, then shoot this bug, run past him, get the shotgun out and just kind of be ready for any bugs that are getting close behind you. If there's not any, just quickly take out this guy, back to the pistol, take out this barrel. It's one of these guys might drop a sapphire for you, so be ready to grab that if they do. Uh, we're going to take out any bugs that follow us into this room and grab this gold bar. So we actually had good RNG here and Luis was quick. It doesn't really make anything easier or more difficult. It just means that we get out of this section faster at the end. When you reach the elevator, and let me tell you what to do here. Throw this flashbang. 
about there. Make sure you're throwing it far down the walkway. And then we're going to look out for bugs that are trying to attack us from behind. Just keep your eyes peeled. And we just need to make it to the merchant, really. Once we make it to the merchant, we should be home free. And uh, we need to upgrade the knife here. So come over to the... Remember I told you we were going to upgrade the knife earlier? Sell the gold bar, the monocle, and whatever other treasure crap we have. And fully upgrade the knife's power. Uh, and equip the knife as well. Make sure you equip it before you go into the Krauser fight. So yeah, once you reach the elevator, the, the bugs won't attack you anymore. But uh, yeah, Luis can be like all the way back. God knows where. And you just have to stand here and wait for him. Sometimes he's right there like he is right now. He's here with us. We're good. But other times he takes like a minute to get to you. And you just stood here like an idiot. In a speed run, it can just cripple your run. Right, so Krauser. My advice... For this fight is to uh just try and parry him and then go for the odd attack or two try to get good at parrying and looking for what he's doing and learning his attacks and waiting for the right moment if you're playing a mouse and keyboard you might want to rebind the parry button because you can actually double bind it but it's not a good idea to spam the parry sometimes it will work but other times it won't. It's really not consistent, so I wouldn't try and think, oh, I can just stand here and spam. It's just not a good idea. Also, when he does this, you have this meter where you've got to break free. If you don't do that quick enough, you will take damage. So, if you get a perfect parry on him, you'll get the ability to melee. It doesn't always work, but it does a lot of the time. That's if you hit the parry at the, you know, the very last moment. Problem is, we're doing that. You just increase the chances of getting hit. You ready for his evade? When he jumps behind you, like he did for me just there, get ready to turn around and slash. Like you can turn around quickly and get a slash on him. If you're on controller, you might just want to turn around and get ready for a parry. You might not be able to turn around quick enough unless you use the quick turn, maybe. Um, but yeah, see how that, see how you get on with that fight. Not a fun one. Very happy when I beat that. But that's chapter 11. Moving on to chapter 12 then, almost onto the island. Okay then, chapter 12. You won't get away. So in this room, we've got a knife, two green herbs and a red herb. Grab all of those up if you want to. To combine some stuff here to make a little space. I've kind of been pushing the limits with this case for a while. I think that I do end up upgrading this case, but at the moment we have uh, the next level of case available at the merchant, but I wait for it to sort of skip over one. And I did that with the one we bought originally as well. Rather than just buying every one, we can save money by skipping them. Just buying two. Leon. No. All right, so... Head for the clock tower. So in this chapter, we need to head back and grab the other golden egg. If you want to do things a little bit differently here, you can use the broken butterfly and one golden egg. If you know what I'm talking about, basically you can kill Salazar with golden eggs. If you get both of them, two golden eggs will kill him. Uh, if you only have one, you can do big damage to him. It will take like 70% of his health away or something like that, but you still need to damage him the other 30%. So, in this room, you don't you can we're gonna loot this room on the way back, but you don't want to stop looting, or sorry, you don't want to stop to loot on the way through here. You want to just make sure you kind of beeline it this way back through this area, uh, because if you take your time, there's a bunch of parasites in this room, and they'll all be controlling the enemies by the time you get here if you loot the room first. Shoot this parasite, which will usually be on the staircase, and just run for the door. Again, this is another chapter where you should really be saving it after the Krauser fight. Um, you can also save it before the Krauser fight if you want to be uh, clever about it, but uh, that's up to you. So, when we're in here, we're going to go and use the Cubit device to open up the box to get the golden egg. Okay, open this up, open this up, and... Yeah, let's open this up. This is where our golden egg is, and if you followed this guide with me, 
you should have both golden eggs. There are only two in the game, and you can't backtrack to get the first one if you're uh, if you don't have it. So there's nowhere else to find another gold chicken egg. This is the only the only two places you can find them. And hitting Salazar with both of them kills him. So, so we're going to take the same path on the way back. But we're going to chuck a flash. All the way through this room. Just keep moving. Don't worry about the enemies. Unless one gets too close like that guy. I was actually just going to say just don't worry just run through. But that guy got a little too close for comfort mate. Had to push him back. When you come through these doors they can't reach you. So you're alright. Okay so we didn't loot this room before. And that's because we come back here now. We could just loot it now. Uh, there's a bunch of loot in here. Watch out for bugs. Yeah, because a few of them may be around camouflage. Some, a lot of the time it's just that one that I shot at a minute ago. But for some reason, sometimes more of them spawn up in this room. And I don't know why. Uh, I don't know what, why the hell they do it. There's only There'll only be like three or four in here. But yeah, you kind of just want to be careful of them. They'll just be hanging out camouflaged usually and you won't have to fight hordes, but uh, yeah, just be careful because they can jump out at you. Don't know why they do this, but it is what it is. The easiest strategy to kill Salazar that you'll see the speedrunners doing is they'll buy one golden egg and then they'll use the like a magnum to do the rest of the damage to him because the one golden egg will take him into like a stunned situation where you can kind of get easy shots on his weak point so you'll see a lot of people just really getting one golden egg but uh yeah we can save some resources it doesn't really hurt to go and get it basically cost us one flash grenade to go and get that other golden egg and we're not going for super duper speedy time here we just kind of want to make sure we get it done you know in a relatively decent time i think four hours is a fair time for this game to be fair, like doing it in under two hours, just or two, even just two hours, requires a stupid amount of glitches. Even like two and a half hours, maybe three. Like crazy amount of glitches that would just be really, uh, really difficult to pull off if you're just trying to follow along. And I also feel like, you know, in no damage terms, make sure you get that ornate beetle, by the way. In no damage terms, using glitches is kind of cheap. You know, I want to make sure that this run was actually really difficult. I don't, I don't just want to cheap out in areas and kind of bend the game's mechanics and stuff. I understand it for speed. Speedruns are completely different, right? Like, speedruns, it's all about, you know... I mean, rules are set in place to make things fair for speedruns anyway, so whatever glitches you're using or not using is determined by the category. And I know I've mentioned this a bit recently. If you've watched a few of my videos, there's a... Uh, a lot, of, and it's. I really don't want to seem like I'm trying to call anyone stupid or be a dick about it. Um, even though people are dicks to me about it, but because they kind of judge you by for using glitches. But uh, yeah, it's all dictated by the categories, and there's a website where it's the rules are made up to make things fair. Like I can kind of give you a for instance, if you like, uh, in Resident Evil Two. The amount of frames you have, if you have a higher frame rate, kind of means that your knife does more damage. If you've ever watched a Resident Evil 2 speedrun, or a Resident Evil 2 remake speedrun, you may have seen people killing bosses really fast with a knife. I'm selling the submachine gun ammo here, mixed hub, first aid spray, ornate beetle. I'm not sure if I buy anything. Let me see. I really don't know. I don't think I buy anything anyway. Maybe a resource? Yeah, there we go. Hmm. But do I have space for it? Oh, we need the heavy grenade recipe. We definitely need that. Get that. So yeah, the higher frame rate you have, the more damage the knife will do in a Resident Evil 2 remake speedrun. Now, let's say I have a PC that allows me to get 150 frames per second on Resident Evil 2, but someone else has a much more powerful PC that allows them to get 400 frames per second on the game. Essentially... They've paid to have a better weapon. You know what I mean? Not by definition, but you know what I mean? Because they've paid more for their PC, they can beat the game faster than me. That's the reason rules are set in place. Rules are there like 
Okay, so everybody has to limit their frame rate to 120 frames per second. That means if your game is running uh, over 120 frames per second, that your run is invalid. And rules like that are in place to make things fair when it comes to speed run, speed runs. Otherwise, people will have an unfair advantage for different reasons. There's lots of different little things that go into it, but that's just a simple one, you know? It's just a way of making things fair. That's usually why people have rules for speedruns. They want everyone to be on a level playing field. And that's also why you might be sitting there thinking, well, what about console people? We don't get 120 frames per second. It's really annoying that you can't shoot that woman through that crack, by the way. You have to look over here. Um... That's also why they have categories that are limited to 60 frames per second, and you can't go over 60 frames per second. You know, that's why rules... Someone was asking me in my comment section about why, you know, there are even rules for speedruns, and that's, you know, exactly why. It's because people like to get competitive with these things, and just like in sports, you're not allowed to use steroids, you know what I mean? It's just a way of making things fair for everybody and having a level playing field within the community. And, you know, there's plenty of people who just don't know about that and that's completely fine, you know, like if you don't, if you're not into that stuff, I completely get it. I mean, it's just a bit frustrating when you see people being really rude about something that they have no idea about, you know? But I digress anyway. So we're using we're using the uh, pistol here to take out these enemies and the long range weapons just before we start climbing up and we set off this flame stuff. We're just making sure that we're pushing these enemies back. Right. So we want to wait for this to rotate back around past us and then we can leave, make a run for it past the flames this way. Up here, yep. There we go. Okay, so we'll grab the loot here, smash the barrels. Yep, yep, yep. And we can use the snipe here to take out any enemies we can see, but I think the flames did a good job. Yeah, there's one. Can't really see her because of the flames at the moment. There she is. Managed to hit her. She fell down the stairs. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so get the shotgun ready for when you run across here, because... Enemies will might be lurking on the other side, but the flame should take out a couple of them. So don't run up the stairs just yet. Try to stay away from the stairs and just in this corner. That'll stop more enemies from running down at you. If you run up the stairs a little bit, enemies tend to run down. So I like to take this one out before we uh, attempt going up. All right, done for. Beautiful. Using the sniper to take out this guy if I can. Yep. Saves me having to get close. Right, here comes this guy with his spiky BDSM balls. Okay, so we're just going to play it patient, wait for them to roll past. There we go. Grab whatever loot we can. Be ready with the shotgun when you run up here because there'll be two enemies waiting on corners. There we go. One and two. This dickhead. This dickhead. And uh, watch out for this archer that's up here. Or crossbow person. And from here you can shoot the guy on the switch. So you can just sort of stop the boulders now. I hit him with a snipe shot but he didn't die. So I just picked him off with a pistol. There we go. And wait for that last boulder to go past. We got a barrel here we can break. Okay, whatever loot we can grab we will take. Nice. Some of this, some of this. Okay, so we can pull the switch and enemies will run up behind us right here. So we can get some really free loot just by pulling the switch and letting it roll over them. Not the fastest strategy, but it works. If you jump down, they kind of just leave you alone. But hey, it's free loot, right? So why not? I know I mention this in all of my runs, and I usually mention it a few times during these runs, and some of you probably don't like to hear it. But if you're interested at all in watching me put together these runs, and uh, how I do them, I do them all over my... All, oh god, that, I completely fumbled my words there, man. I do them all over on my live stream channel at twitch.tv slash iframes. That link is in the comment section 
should be the top comment pinned up if you would like to come and follow completely free to these to do so you're more than welcome to come and join us and watch me put these together if you want to chat with me or talk to the community at all that's where we all hang out i'm trying to get into the habit of streaming every day so come on over give me a follow but if you're just a YouTube person, that's completely fine. If you're new here, though, you know, you might want to follow up the channel. I do plenty of runs like this. It's kind of my thing. I like doing challenge runs. No damage stuff in particular is something I really enjoy doing. So at the beginning here, I want to try and take out that uh, guy in red. Those guys are really frustrated, but I can't take too long because of this crossbow person. So after hitting him with a few shots, he didn't die. So I turned around to take care of her. A few pistol shots on him and he was done. Okay, so we can use the barrels to our advantage here. But we haven't got a huge amount of pistol ammo. Uh, we got a little bit of shotgun, but we want to save the shotgun in case anybody jumps on the lift. There's an achievement here tied to stopping any enemy from jumping on the lift, which is actually kind of tricky. You have to know the pattern really well. But to be honest, I'm just more focused on not getting hit. So the archers, or the crossbow people, are my uh, priority. So if anyone does jump on the lift, we just want to be ready with the shotgun. And if your ammo starts getting low in it, you really want to be ready to reload it. It can't take too long, obviously, because there will be more enemies coming. But, uh, yeah. Let's get rid of this dude if we can. I completely whiffed that shot. Managed to hit him on the way up there. This is why you want to keep that shotgun loaded and ready. Four shots in it, so that's still pretty good. Use the shotgun to push them back. The reason we like the riot gun so much is because it has range. Like, way more range than the WA-70. It kind of needs loaded at this point. I just want him to shut up and stop using his stupid chant stuff. There we go. Right, let's get a reload as much as I can. One really annoying thing about the shotgun in this game. If you don't upgrade the reload time... When Leon's reloading the shotgun... If you try to cancel it by aiming, so let's say you've got two shells in your shotgun and you press reload and he gets to four shells and then an enemy gets in your face. Realistically, you should be able to stop reloading and shoot the gun at that point, right? Or at least finish the reload. Like not have to go to seven shells, like the maximum capacity of the shotgun. Uh, but in the game, Leon doesn't do that. Like if you're at four shells and he's reloading he's going all the way to seven before you'll be able to aim with that shotgun again so you kind of have to switch weapon in order to stop him and then go back to the shotgun and it, and it will allow you to do so so if you've got your sprint on uh hold the hold mechanic where you have to hold it rather than toggle it you can tap sprint across these breaking scaffolding things and uh save yourself a little bit of time okay there's also a setting on the game i probably should have mentioned this earlier but there's a setting that gives you a dot in the middle of the screen at all times and if you're a fan of third person games you know that gives you a massive advantage because usually you don't have a cursor on your screen when you are not aiming and uh, if you use that setting, you can basically use it to line up your shot before your aim, for, uh, before you aim. So let's say you're moving around, you can line the shot up with an enemy and then quickly press left trigger or left mouse button and be, or is it, no, it's right mouse button, come to think of it. That's, that's weird. That's a strange thing to think about. It's right mouse button, but left trigger. But yeah, you can pretty much press it. And uh, it'll be on the enemy already because you've used that dot. Back in the day, people used to mark their screens for stuff like that. People would put a little dot in the center of their screen, like a little piece of blue tack or tape or something like that. Just to mark where exactly it would be. Alright, so after getting that yellow herb, talking to the merchant, selling stuff. Get rid of all that shit. Let's go and loot up. Grab these barrels. So... Before you go in here, equip your golden egg. Make sure you don't click use. If you click use, Liam will eat it, and you don't want that. All right, so I like to aim just to the right of Salazar's head, and you'll end up hitting him, and that'll take him down. Second one on him, and that will kill him. Really easy boss fight. One nice thing about doing that is in this room, we've got some ammo pickups. Because it's a boss fight, the game wants to be nice to us. 
uh, in the boss room gives us a little bit of ammo. So I'll just go and smash up the barrels, see what you get. You might get some shotgun shells and rifle ammo like I just did. It's kind of useful. Usually you get better ammo in these rooms. So it's a good idea just to have a little look around, smash those barrels, see what you get. It's kind of frustrating when you get handgun ammo though, because that, and especially if the case appears next to the handgun ammo icon on the top right, it kind of means that the case you're using has generated the handgun ammo. Essentially, it means that the case has stolen your loot. It's turned whatever was in there into handgun ammo. It could have been heavy grenades, but it turned it to handgun ammo, which is frustrating, but nothing you can do about it, really. But uh, yeah, we're already onto the island, man. Chapter 13 coming up. We got four more chapters. Three of them are kind of tough. Um, 16 is really an easy chapter. There's really nothing to it. But 13, 14, and 15 are a little bit tricky. Krauser. Where do you think you're taking her? All right. So one surprise you may be in store for if you haven't played professional mode is that down here there's a couple of knights. So... When you get down here, look out for this knight. You want to bait him into an attack. And then I just like to stand here, grab a grenade, and just throw a grenade at him to stun him up. And you can easily run past while he's stunned up. Nice and easy. You'll find that he can hit you with a random attack if you're unlucky. So let's just go. There's another knight here as well, but we can kind of just run past him. I think he actually got really close to hitting me when I ran past him. Like, he skimmed my eyelash, man. All right. Get the loot out of that barrel. When you reach this point, the, the knights can't follow you because of the blue light that's in the area. Perfect. All right, so have to swim after all. onto the island then. We are three hours into this run, another hour left. Beautiful, we're doing well. Good progress, good progress. Still no damage as well, let's go. Happy days. All right, chapter 13. Onto the island then. So this chapter has some cheeky skips in it that we'll use to save a bunch of time especially in regards to no damage this section can be really annoying but it's at the very start of the chapter so it's kind of easy to restart and try it again you should definitely be saving uh, at the beginning of this chapter but uh, it's not that difficult to actually get through just the beginning can be a little bit tricky because there's a skip here we're going to use that can save a bunch of time involving the turrets. So, you want to try to get through here quickly and get to this guy while he's walking away from you. If when you approach he isn't in the right position, you might want to just wait a couple of seconds, take those two enemies out, and chuck a grenade up at this guy, and that'll knock him down into the turret. Stick to your right when you run up the stairs a little bit to get through the turret a little bit easier, and then shoot the brute in the, the red box on his arm and that will stun him allowing you to run through you gotta be quick here though because he will be chasing you you can run past that third guy and he'll just let you pass every time he's kind of scripted to just run out there so you can just run past him if you get to heal you won't get in any trouble from those enemies behind you they'll leave you alone and we can stab this guy loot up these barrels got a heavy grenade there which is really nice uh, we need a further I think four heavy grenades in total for some skips that are upcoming in the uh, nearby chapters. So make sure you're saving those. We're going to chuck this flash grenade over here. Run past all of these guys. You want to tuck into the right running into that area so you can avoid the RPG guy. If these guys get too close, be ready to shotgun them. I had to parry that one dude that got too close. And uh, we're just going to push through the door. So... That whole sprint is a little bit tricky. That grenade is definitely hard to throw. You have to angle it in the right way that it knocks the guy into the turret. I know that trick can seem really difficult to pull off, but uh, it's doable, man. If you give it a try, you'll be surprised at how you get on. So we're going to take out the RPG dude that's down here. The reason we want to kill these enemies, this isn't actually the, uh, the way that we want to go uh, to progress the chapter, but uh, yeah, we need to come down here because of the elegant crown that's down in this area. Getting this and putting the right gems in it will give us a further 100k 
And although it's not 100% necessary, really, it's just really useful to have for anybody who's maybe not got a lot of money right now. You really want to watch out for that archer guy. He is frustrating. Crossbow guy. Not really an archer, but whatever. So, getting away from them now after we grab that elegant crown. Come up here and we can shoot this bomb. Miss the shot. And again. These guys are right on my heels. We've got Velvet Blue in this case we can quickly grab. And we're going to go over here and up these stairs. So when you come up here, stick to the back wall. And there's a trap here you can sort of bring these enemies into. So I'll just start shooting. Try to take this guy out. And the second one will come out like a big dum-dum and run into it. If you're lucky, it'll take them both out. But uh, be ready to shoot the other one in case only one of them gets done in by the trap. So in these lockers, we've got a little bit of ammo. Got a high chance of finding shotgun shells there, which is nice. Because we are quite low on them right now. And we do need some for this chapter. We've only got six. So we've got another bit of a mad sprint coming up. Most of these enemies that we're about to run past, though, are really easy to get past. One of them is a brute. And those guys are just annoying to fight in general on this difficulty. So we tend to just avoid fighting them if we can. So hop down here. And run past all the way up nice so smash this box grab whatever's inside it through these doors and we're going to come here to the right just run straight through we're going to run past this guy just stick to our right and we can run right past him we need to shotgun the next guy that's in this doorway so we're ready to put him down so we can get past and then when we come through here keep going keep going Swing a right and a left through here. Stick to the left wall when you come through here. And then this guy coming out of the oven won't grab you. And then let's visit the merchant. So we're going to go ahead and sell the cubic device, the key, the lip rouge, whatever stuff we can't put gems into. We're getting the 9 by 13 case upgrade. We're buying some resources, large ones and a small one. And I'm going to make some shotgun shells. Smash this barrel, some handgun ammo. Alright, so we're gonna need a few shotgun shells to get through this area. So coming through here then, let's head to our right. Right again. Don't worry about that regen dude, he uh isn't here. It's kind of just a little jump scare, I guess. He disappears quite quickly though. I'd love to know where he goes, mate. Maybe into the vents. Horror enemies love to use vents. So we're going to pull this switch. Go this way. And into this room. In this room you can get a red barrel, a first aid spray that was just on the desk there on the left. And some gunpowder as well. Grab those. Come all the way around here. The solution here will be the same for you guys as it is for me. These puzzles can take me a little while sometimes. I never remember them. Oh, bear with me while I fail for a second. Yeah. Pretty sure I have to move this one around. Is that it? There we go. That's your solution. Always takes me a second to get those. Alright, so... Let's grab this keycard. Head back. And when you get out here, shock on this dude in the legs. And just run away. We're not going to try and fight him. We don't have the bioscope yet, so we can't see where his parasites are. We need to pull the switch again. So that we can switch over the power. Let's head back. And uh, he shouldn't be close enough to grab us right here. We should be good to keep going. We're going to go left here and into the freezer. And right, use the keycard to open this. He is chasing us, so we got to be quick. In here, and just on your right, there's a little sort of freezer locker thing you can open up for some loot. Shotgun shells, very nice. Alright, let's use the key card then. Get this up to level 2. So when you put this in, another one of the regen guys drops in through one of the bags in the freezer. And we're going to want to shotgun him in the leg straight away and run out of the room. You stay in here, you just you're probably going to get grabbed by him. So it's a good idea to come back this way. Keep your eyes peeled for the other regen guy. He might be around. 
But uh, usually he's not in this area, so we can just sort of wait here. When this one gets close with his little snake maneuvers, we're going to go back on ourselves. At this point, he should start regening his leg and stand back up. So we're going to come back, grab the keycard, and then head back, shoot him in the leg again, and just run past. Yeah, we don't want to deal with those guys. They are an absolute nuisance. Alright, so head back this way. Look out for the regen guy. He might be in your way here. Get ready to shoot him in the leg. The first one we dealt with. <clears throat> and use the key card to open this door. So when we come in here, uh, there's a good cheese spot. It's actually really stupid, to be honest. When you come in here, there's three enemies. And you need to kill them while you're in this room. There's one down below us, well, two down below us, and one through the door you can see just ahead of me. With this set of stairs, though, if you back up just a little bit at the top of these stairs, these guys won't come up here. They'll sort of turn around and walk away. That's why they all look kind of confused right now. You'll see this guy do it. If I run back just a little, he sort of stops and walks off, which is really stupid. A lot of these spots, they're actually everywhere in the game, and you can abuse the hell out of them if you want to. I don't really like to do it, but this one is kind of just... I guess an oversight by the developers, because it's kind of... An enemy's running towards you, especially these guys with the tentacle heads. It's just kind of natural that you're going to move away from them, and you only have to back up a few steps from the top of the stairs, and these guys will just walk away. Um, but yeah, you can just stand up here and pick these guys off. It's kind of what you want to do here to make sure that you're not in any trouble in the next area, because we've got to take out the regen enemies in the next area, and if these guys are still alive and they chase us in, they can end up destroying the tanks in the next area. So you want to make sure you've dealt with all of them, get whatever's in this room, a yellow herb, there's a, a crate to smash and some gunpowder on the shelf as well. In this room you can find a flashbang in there, some rifle ammo on that thing to the left that I just grabbed, and also some rifle ammo right here. Make sure you grab all of that, you're going to need it. Uh, we've got red herb, Right here, I think there's submachine gun ammo in that one. I'm not really going to use it, but we can sell it at least uh, in one of these cabinets. I think there's some more rifle ammo. Yeah, we need that. So, hand grenade on the middle as well. Grab that. And we're going to grab the two crates. Whatever's in them. Shotgun shells is always good. So, we got the bio sensor scope. Let's put that into the inventory. Slap it on our sniper. And then we're going to hop over here. Reload the snipe. And we need to take out all of these guys, because in a minute this room is going to flood with enemies. And you don't want these guys flopping about while they're in here, so... You can sort of get to the side of them and try to take out two of their parasites in one shot. If you can line it up from the front, that's decent. But uh, if you can't, try and line it up from the side, it does work. On this difficulty, they have more parasites. Usually four. And just deal with them one by one. You can sort of hop over these windows to avoid them really easily. Just do your best to take them out. Kind of an easy strategy to get rid of these guys. Takes a little bit of time, but uh, it's much easier to do this than have them in the room with you while you're trying to deal with the enemies while the key card is doing its thing. So just sort of jump over here, yeah, back and forward. Keep doing your best to hit these parasites. I know it can be tricky, especially when they're on the floor. I feel like it's really hard to hit them while they're on the floor. Just make sure you're staying safe. Pick your shots. If you want to wait for them to stand back up, that makes it way easier to hit. I know it's frustrating when they're on the floor, like I said, but what are you going to do, eh? There we go. Did I hit one there or just not? I think I hit him in the head, but there we go. Finally. Jesus. Alright, so that's two down. That one had the wrench as well. If you want to risk it, use the wrench now and see how you get on in the fight. But uh, I just like to take these guys out. Makes my life way easier. Alright, we have used a lot of snipe ammo. That's the one disadvantage to this bit. Alright, as soon as they jump over, run away. Or when they're close, just run the opposite way. Keep looping them around like you're playing DVD or something. Just imagine he's a really shit killer. Alright. Alexandrite from that one. Get some nice treasures from him too, it's always decent. So this one has two parasites kind of on top of each other, which is nice. Go. So it'll take the time to line up the site. Alright. Two more. One. And two. 
There we go. Lovely. Used a lot of sniper ammo, but it just makes this section so much easier. A lot slower, but much, much easier. So let's uh, take a look here. I think I might have made some rifle ammo. I'm not sure, because I was running low after that fight. All right, let's go ahead. Use the wrench. Slap the key card in. And, uh, yeah, start picking off these guys. They'll spawn in as soon as we put the keycard in, so we just want to be ready to fight. So we're using the snipe for distance, and if anyone gets close, we'll just whip out the shotgun. There is one guy that spawns here with dynamite, so look out for him. He's very frustrating to deal with. These enemies are generally much tougher than the villagers that we've dealt with before, so... Just use the flashbang here to stun them up. Good strategy is just to stun them up, run up and stab. Having those Plagas heads around uh, can make things really tough to deal with. I went ahead and shot the dynamite guy, guy there. One thing you really don't want to have happen is not deal with the regen people and leave them in the tank. And then you shoot that dynamite guy and they all get set out at once. Having four or well, three of the regen guys flopping around obviously you have to kill one for the wrench but having the other three flopping around and all those guys at the same time is just so difficult to deal with so yeah i'd just say be very careful and make sure you're in a comfortable position when you do that so that's the end of chapter 13 then kind of a long one chapter 14 is also a long one but uh we're doing well progressing nicely it wasn't too much of a tough chapter. It's, stuff in that chapter looks a lot more difficult than it actually is. But uh, yeah, moving on to chapter 14 then. Okay, so this is another pretty long chapter. We've got a bunch of stuff to get through and then a boss fight at the end. This is another chapter where we will be buying a rocket launcher. So we're going to grab the crystal ore that's in that room. A couple of crates to smash and there's also a fish in the... Uh, the locker there. Can't leave behind a good fish. God knows where Leon's keeping that fish, but whatever. I like to shoot this crate at the back that we didn't smash on the way through this area originally, just to see if there's any ammo in it. If it's money, I tend to leave it, but if it's ammo, I'll go and grab it. So just use a pistol bullet to open that up. I'm putting the normal scope back on the rifle for now because I will be using it, but we need to switch back to the bioscope a little later in this chapter. So don't put it into storage. Um, I just prefer the other scope, to be honest. Alright, so smashing all this stuff open. Get whatever's in here. Hopefully you get some ammo. I don't think I did, but hopefully you do on your run. We can sell up the wrench, keycard, crystal ore, first aid spray, bass, mix, herb, all that good stuff. Buying some resources, small and large. Opening up this locker. Heavy grenade. Very nice. So for this chapter, we want two heavy grenades and one normal grenade. And that can make the forklift section a lot easier. When you come through here, shoot down this lantern to get another Alexandrite. And when we come up here, we're just going to drop down to the left. There's some medallions you can get in this area if you want to, but I actually ended up leaving them. I didn't really see the point at this point because we've already got a bunch of spinels. Um, and I, end I actually end up not spending them. They do carry over into my next playthrough on this save. I want to bother with that. But to be honest, what you can do with the spinals at this point is if you've still got them, is sell them or trade them for uh, Velvet Blues because you can get as many Velvet Blues as you like from the merchant. So you can just go ahead and trade them for as many Velvet Blues as you can get and get a bunch of extra Pesetas, which is nice. Okay, so whatever we get out of these barrels, we will take crates as well. I think there's six boxes to smash in this little area. So, yeah, one thing to bear in mind, if you're struggling for money at this point, when you get to this point in the game, is when you get to Sadler, you're going to need a... I use a rocket launcher for Krauser, and I also use a rocket launcher for Sadler at the end of the game. Uh, if you haven't got enough money for both of those rocket launchers, one thing you can do is on chapter 16, you can sell your guns in order to get enough money for the rocket launcher, because you only need one rocket launcher shot. Even if you have nothing else, you can still beat him just by waiting it out and waiting for Ada to throw you the special rocket launcher. All right, so here, chucking that grenade down. Check, I've been very careful for parries. 
Hitting both of those guys with one shot, which is kind of nice. But Ashley can get hit really easy here, and a couple of these guys will usually mutate, so I like to use a flashbang just to get rid of them. We've got a box there just behind us. I'm going to take out all of those guys, smash these barrels, grab whatever's in them, and smash this also. Velvet blue in there. And we're going to head up, reload our stuff, and tell Ashley to hold down the switch. There's one really tough enemy in this chapter. Yeah, hold this down. Obviously Krauser is a tough boss fight, but uh, yeah, one of those regen guys that mutates after you've taken out their initial parasites. But there's a really easy strategy you can do uh, to get past him and I'll show you guys that. Only really a couple of difficult tricks in this run. Specifically the turret skips. I feel like the turret skips are the hardest ones to do. Uh, but with a little bit of practice, they're actually not so bad. Alright, let's knock these guys down. Grab whatever he's got. Reload our stuff. And let's go tell Ashley. Oh no, 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 she's already, what am I talking about? We've already done that, moving on. Get the rifle ready, and we're going to snipe this guy that's at the top of the stairs. If you stand about here, he shouldn't be able to hit you with his axes. He'll just kind of hit the top of the door. I've had a really funny situation where... I've dodged out of the way of that axe and it's just hit Ashley straight in the face. It's pretty great. Alright. So, that guy's down. Let's grab his stuff. Grab our flashbang. Chuck it down there. Stun everyone. You want to make sure you get that right at the back. You can stab this guy that's blocking the door. And through we go. So, velvet blue. Kind of nice to get out of a barrel. We've got one more barrel in the corner. Smells pretty bad. So in the back left corner here, you can find an emerald. Do you want to make sure you grab it? Sorted. That can go into our uh, elegant crown that we've got. So bear in mind, we have a, we've got 150k. We've got other treasures to play with. And we've got weapons we can sell if we need to. We've also got the elegant crown. But yeah, we've got, a ton of, we've got a ton of money in the back pocket right now. For these meters, you want to make sure you can get the timing down. You kind of want to press it just when the needle passes the 10. Don't put Ashley in the locker here. Keep her with you and slap the biosensor scope back on the rifle. This guy will spawn up when you get to about here. Back up. You want to try and hit this guy's parasites uh, without him flopping around the room. So don't miss shots here. So if you do, just try and run around the room and pop them. When, as soon as you've taken out those parasites and he gets to this stage, run for the switches. And again, you want to press it just when it passes the 10 on the, the meter. And you'll hit it. Once you get through here, he'll leave you alone. Fighting him in his next uh, stage, where you've got to shoot him in the head, is actually really frustrating. Not because hitting him in the head is hard, but just because he doesn't stop chasing you. And you're more than likely going to get hit by that guy if you're... Uh, not going for a no damage run. Doing that guy like that is probably the safest way to avoid damage. In this room, there are four rats you can take out for some extra spinals if you want them. We're kind of going along that route anyway. And they're uh, pretty much right at our feet as we pass through this area. So it's a good idea to get them if you just want some extra cash or whatever. Uh, get yourself some easy money. Yeah, the other one will be here by these boxes somewhere. You do move around a little bit, so it might be in a different position for you. There it is. When we come through here, then, we've got an ornate necklace. Yeah, all of this stuff, I ended up, at the end of the run, I didn't sell, like, any of the stuff that I had at the end. Like, I didn't need to, but, yeah, if you do that, you're going to have a bunch of money and stuff to put into guns if you want to. It's entirely up to you what you do with it. I don't think I ended up selling any of my guns. So the other two rats are in this area somewhere. There should be two of them running around. There's one. We've got a green herb there. There's also a fish in this area that you can grab. So let's go ahead, grab a fish and uh, pull the switch. When you pull the switch, get ready with your sniper. You want to look straight down here. Don't run back towards Ashley. Because the regen guy, you want to kill these guys as fast as possible. I was whiffing my shots here. I definitely missed a couple. If you see that pillar, that's kind of what my cursor was on there for a second, sort of there. You don't want to run past that pillar. If you run past that pillar, the regen guy is going to spawn in. And we don't want that. We want to wait until we spawn him in. Two more dudes are going to run in. Do your best to take them out. If you're more accurate than I am, 
Uh, Ashley probably won't get grabbed here. Just be careful when you're uh, trying to get rid of this guy if he grabs Ashley. Because if you shoot her, it's a GG. And again, I was just whiffing everything here. But I managed to hit him. He dropped her. I want to put the normal scope on. I really don't like the bioscope. I really only use it when I absolutely have to. So if you do save Ashley, she'll go back to the switch for you. Yeah, this is a tough shot through the bars, man. Yeah, there we go, bars. And again, there we go, luckily managed to pop him. So four of these guys will come after Ashley. And the fifth one will only spawn once you activate this regen guy. And he'll spawn up when you run past that pillar. So when you do that, come back to here. You want to shoot this guy quick before the regen dude catches up to you. And then just kind of run him around here. And then run back to Ashley. If you feel like he's getting a bit too close, whip out the shotgun. Pop him in the leg. And run back to Ashley. And you won't have to fight him because Ashley will just drop the bridge on him. Making it really easy to deal with. Yeah, that fight can be kind of tricky to get your head around. But you just need to kind of be accurate with the snipe. And we just wait here now. If you want to, you can just pretty much tell Ashley to come along and she'll drop the bridge. But I like this thing. I think it's funny to watch this guy fall to his death. So, like uh, see you later, mate. we got a little bit of loot we can grab off these guys. Thanks. There we go. Lovely. Not a huge amount left of the run now. Like I said, this the time on this run was under four hours. Although the video will probably be just over it because of like... Cutscene cut scene time doesn't count towards your game time and uh, pauses, menus, save screens, stuff like that. None of that counts towards the uh, game time. So when you come under heal, go ahead and pop these parasites with the pistol. They'll die relatively easily. And we can visit the merchant one more time if we need to. If you haven't got two heavy grenades heal or... Um, you need two heavy grenades and a normal grenade. If you haven't got those, you can craft heavy grenades using uh, the recipe that we bought earlier on. If you haven't got it, you might want to get it from the merchant. So yeah, the reason we're going to get those heavy grenades is because we can drastically reduce the amount of time we're doing this section for. If you throw two heavy grenades and a normal grenade at the crack in the wall that Ashley is hitting with the wrecking ball... It basically means that it only takes one swing. She only has to hit it once. Which just means this section is so much quicker and easier by doing that. But we're good. We've got four heavy grenades. Which is pretty much as many as we need. And we've got uh, enough. So flash these guys at the start. Switch to your heavy grenades. Chuck two of them at the crack in the wall. And then throw one normal grenade. Grab everything out of that. those two crates. Blow that barrel up. I like to shotgun this archer guy. Because he's annoying. We can use this barrel here to deal with him. There we go. That takes a lot longer. If you don't do that, like a lot longer. So everyone's going to rush over here. We can use this barrel to take him out. Making our lives a lot easier. Come through here. Might want to press the switch a little sooner than I did. I was kind of taking my time here to take these enemies out. I'm just trying to back Ashley up really. Because she's going to run over to us. And she can still get grabbed at this point. So just be careful. Go ahead and uh, smash up these crates. We press the switch. We're waiting for this lift to come down. Grab what's ever in them. Or whatever is in them. I think you might have found your calling. Okay. Grab up there, Lou. Why not? There was a couple of guys here that kind of didn't react to us or whatever. I think they started chasing me in a second. But I just wanted to get these couple of crates. Because usually there's good ammo in those crates for this section. Little bit of loot we're leaving behind there, but I'm fine with that. Let's go and let's get out of here. So this is the part where Ashley starts talking about how we work well together, and the answer is no, Ashley. You're terrible. I guess so. Right? Maybe someday I'll become an agent like you. What do you think? You could protect the US from any and all threats. Is that right? Well, either way. First, we have to make it out of here. You're no fun. Yeah, no, Ashley. <clears throat> On this difficulty, she's an absolute nightmare to look after, especially without the armor. <laughs> 
with the armor, she's actually not that bad. She can just kind of do her own thing and you don't have to worry too much, but without it on this difficulty, it is horrible. All right, so crystal ore in here. There's a yellow herb, a couple of crates. Grab all of that stuff. And uh, we just need to interact with this amber. Yellow herb there, slap that on. Uh, we've got the crown. We can put our red beryl, our alexandrite, our emerald, our yellow sapphire, and our, oh, sorry, yellow diamond and the sapphire. And that makes the crown worth 100k, which is really, really good. We really don't need that much money at all. I'm not sure if we bought the Killer 7 yet. I don't think we have. I think we buy it up ahead. I may sell the Broken Butterfly because there's no point in having two Magnums. It's up to you if you want to do that, though. If you're going for the achievement or trophy where you have all weapons, you might not want to do that. But yeah, you will need to get the Killer 7 for the next section. All right. Couple of enemies here, we stab that one, chuck the grenade into the others, just stand here and pistol these dudes. You kind of separate it by the ladder, and if they do get too close, you can just shoot them back off the ladder, you know, it makes this section really nice and simple. Alright. Open up these lockers, grab whatever's in them, crates, free stuff. Hopefully, you get some good loot out of all this. We really don't have a lot of the game left. We don't need a huge amount of ammo now, but. A little bit is nice for the one section that we're going to do after this chapter. So, pretty much we've just got the Krauser fight coming up. It is a really easy fight, to be honest. There's one part of it that's a little bit tricky. Um, but with the rocket launcher we're going to buy, the, the bit of it that is actually hard becomes really easy. So, Let's go ahead and smash up all these barrels, as this is just before a boss fight, usually you get decent loot out of it. There's the case snatching my, hand, my uh, ammo again and changing it into handgun ammo, which is really frustrating. And again, son of a bitch. Alright, let's have a little chat with the merchant then. We need to get our rocket launcher, that's important to not forget. So, see, I don't think we can fit that in just yet. Let's give him the... Herb, first aid spray, black bass, and the elegant crown can go as well. So we got like 348k. We've got enough money for both of our uh, 351k. We've got enough money, 396k, because I think I sold him the broken butterfly, right? So we've got more than enough for our two rocket launchers that we need now. Um, if you find yourself you know, a little bit low on money. You can sell your weapons for this for the last rocket launcher we need. You don't have to do that yet. You can do it just before you go into the Saddler fight. But yeah, this is why I've kind of been collecting all the stuff I have. I know it was a bit overkill, but um, at least I, ha I have this money if I want to do a new game plus playthrough or something like that at some point in the future. So when we get into this fight, we've got the Killer 7. We've shortcutted it as well so we can grab it. We're going to wait till he stops shooting us and then... Shoot him a couple of times, keep shooting him until he throws a flash. You want to hit him as he kind of lands after that jump. Because uh, it makes it so that uh, he won't run at you. If you hit him enough, he won't start doing his old dodge crap. and That can make him much harder to hit and you'll have to parry him more than likely. Alright, so shotgun shells and herb. Not bad getting some shotgun shells right now. Shotgun shells are pretty good for the next chapter as well. Getting them for chapter 15 is really nice. Let's keep going. Hop down here. Alright, all the way around. So, you can shoot this mine if you want to, but you can just duck under it as well, like that. So we're going to hop down here, tuck into this little alcove, wait for him to drop down, wait until he's running at you, and then shotgun him. It's a really easy shot to make, but if you shot if you shoot him too early, you might not be able to get the uh, shot off. So just wait. I'm gonna send the bioscope to storage because I don't want to use that anymore. And I'm gonna come around here, shank the bear trap, wait here behind this wall. He'll show up and shoot it with an arrow, throw a flashbang, and then he'll run away. We can shoot this mine. We want to shoot this turret and. That bear trap, this turret also. Come this way and blow up this trap. There's a box here you can destroy for some extra stuff. It's just got some money in it though, not really interesting. 
Bear trap. Turret. Make sure you don't forget about those. When you get to about here, you'll just want to turn around. Make sure that arrow doesn't hit you at all, and then come back this way. There's a red herb and a crate just up here. Go ahead and grab those. Magnum ammo. Always useful. Little bit of that. Yeah, try to save some magnum ammo for the next chapter. Okay, so when you get to here, back up and wait for him to shoot an arrow at you. Make sure you're hiding behind this pillar. When he shoots the arrow, you've got enough time to peek out and hit him with a sniper shot in the face back into the pillar. You want to keep doing that. You should have to hit him with two shots in the face and then he'll leave you alone through this area. I think I missed my first shot, so I've only hit him with one so far. Here's our second. Right in the face, and after that he'll just duck back in and you'll be able to just run through this area. If you try and just sneak it through here, he'll probably end up hitting you with the arrows, which is super annoying. So just staying back is uh, advisable. Okay, shoot that. Wait for him to throw his grenades and then run back to about heal. Let's break the crate and... Uh, when you run into this area, you want to keep running forward and duck behind the second pillar. Shoot him a few times. Four times is nice there. Duck out of his way. Hit him. I've left three bullets in the uh, magnum, which is all we really need. But we want to be ready. When he flashbangs you, he'll come behind you, and you just want to make sure you evade that. Turn around. Shotgun him using the shotgun here to move him away from us. Eventually he'll run away, and this section is done with. That's pretty much all the ammo we need to use except for the rocket launcher on Krauser. But you need to hit this parry perfectly, and you want to wait until about now. Like, you have to time that very well when he sort of swings around and he's just about to attack. Go for the parry. Best way to do that is just to parry. It might take you a little bit of practice to get that parry down. It is a difficult one to hit. Um, but yeah, that's what you kind of want to do there just to get through him without getting hit. So when we get to heal, let's go and grab all the loot. We need to evade here. Really easy evade. Keep running forward. He'll leave you alone. Grab what's in these. Red herb. We can combine that with a green one. Why not? You can see how much extra heals I've got. Um, I know I said at the beginning of this run that you will end up with a ton of extra heals, or I do. You can see how many extra I have. Because I'm just not using any, but I'm collecting a bunch. So you have got plenty to work with throughout the run. Right, when you gain control here, make sure you got the rocket launcher equipped. Evade him, shoot the floor just behind him, and he's done for. Easy. If you don't angle that rocket launcher properly, you can end up making that Leon take damage. So make sure you kind of just hit it behind him a little bit and you'll hurt Krauser and not yourself. All right, two more chapters then, and they're both short ones. We're nearly done. Zero damage, baby. All right. Chapter 15 then, let's go. Okay, so this isn't too much of a long one. Um, around about 15 minutes or something like that. But uh, there is a little trick in this chapter that's a little bit difficult to replicate. With a bit of practice though, you'll be fine. Hopefully you've saved uh, at the beginning of this chapter. There's a couple of annoying sections to deal with. So we need at least one heavy grenade for this chapter. Two is ideal. If you've got one, you can still make it work. But uh, we're crouching behind this area here to just wait for Mike, the helicopter pilot, to come in and deal with these enemies for us. When he's had his first little burst, you want to move forward, come around the back here. Those guys will all be kind of shuffling about. They won't really come for you too, too aggressively. Come up here and get to the turret. You want to try and get to the turret before this cutscene plays. And it'll stop you from having to watch it. So getting on the turret, you want to look into this cave and you'll just see enemies spawning in and you can just kind of spam them. You can get Mike to deal with these enemies, but I kind of prefer him to deal with the ones that are behind us and just spam these enemies. 
you haven't got infinite ammo on that turret so be wary of how much you're using all right so i think it's around six or eight enemies that come out of that cave and when you kill two two more will spawn but if you come over here after that and just sit on this corner enemies will jump out of the building and come around and mike will kind of just take them out you want to look out for any enemy that's going to shoot at you with a crossbow or throw an axe at you try and deal with them prioritize those enemies all right keep shooting so i think that's it for mike now we'll get the cutscene any second there we go let's swing around to the left heel head down this way So when you get to here, so just wait on this corner. Mike will eventually come in and take down this tower. You don't want to expose yourself and get hit by a turret or an RPG. Just wait it out. Eventually Mike will help you. There we go. Sorted. Alright, so coming around here, be ready to shoot this barrel. There'll be two crossbow guys that are waiting around here and you don't want to get caught up by them. One of them survived for me. He was kind of hiding his head here, which is a bit frustrating. There we go, mate. And usually they'll mutate. Sometimes Mike will help you with them, and other times Mike won't. So just be ready to shoot those guys. There's also a barrel down there you can use to take out the two dynamite enemies in that area. So right here we'll have a little cutscene. The anti-air gun will show up. And this isn't too precise, but if you come and stand about here and chuck a heavy grenade up, you can blow up the anti-air uh, gun with that. As soon as you've done that, you want to look up and look for the RPG guy and take him out and start shooting these guys. If you don't destroy the anti-air gun in one grenade, just chuck another one. You should get it after that. Look out for an enemy on this turret. And pretty much all we're going to do is sit here for a while while Mike takes people out. There will be enemies rushing you. You want to look out for the parasite that comes up as well. That's why I shot that barrel right there. I don't know if you could see it too well. But there's one parasite that spawns in this area just randomly. And you want to look out for him because he can just rush up on you really quick. Uh, we're just going to sit here. We're kind of protected here. You want to look out mainly for archers. If an archer gets an angle on you, try and take him out. You'll see me shift in between fighting enemies in front of me and looking up to my right. Um, just for a cheeky archer that may be sitting up there. But Mike will help you out a lot. He'll take out enemies. So just be careful of that. This turret guy can be kind of frustrated, but I think he's already dead. Yeah, watch out for an enemy on that turret. You don't want to push too far back here because the turret will just pepper you from afar. So just be ready. Like I said, Mike is super helpful here. Yeah, archers can be up on that platform you see me looking up to on the right. Just up there. But just be careful of them. Kind of just be impatient here. You can make this section go a lot faster by running up to the the gate that Mike blows open. And it'll sort of cue his cutscene. But I just prefer to take it slow here. Just wait, let Mike do his thing. Take out these enemies. Run this guy. This guy. Nope. There we go, there we go. Again, just be careful of archers. Kind of your worst nightmare in this section. Here comes one now. There comes Mike. Beautiful. So, when Mike does blow open the gates, be ready with a hand grenade if you've got one around this area. I was sort of running to get this loot, but I turned back to go to the gate. Got two hand grenades, that's good. Okay. Nice. I'll make things ten times easier right here because a bunch of guys run through that door when it blows up. Come to about here when that's done with and snipe this guy on the turret. Look to the left, snipe this guy on the turret. Tried to hit him in the head but he moved too quickly. This guy was being a bit of a sponge though which was kind of frustrating. Let's keep shooting. There we go. He's done. Right, so there's a guy that comes to our left when we step through this opening. Don't run in too haphazardly into this area because there's usually a crossbow guy up on your left. Just take it nice and slow, wait around here. Pick the enemies off as they come. As you come in here, more enemies will spawn, so just be ready. Sit back here. Wait for these guys to push out. 
this guy too. There we go. You can use the snipe if you want to. Pretty much this is the last section where we need pistol and uh, rifle ammo. It's nice. To, we need a bit of shotgun ammo. We need a bit of uh, magnum ammo. You don't have to use the magnum for the next section, although it helps. Shotgun ammo can do it on its own, but it's definitely a little more useful to have a couple of bullets in the magnum. Or the killer seven. Let's get rid of this guy. I think the crossbow guy is still up here. This is why I haven't been pushing in, because this dude is just hanging out. As soon as you push in, he's just going to start firing his bull crap at me. Alright, there's some gunpowder on the sandbag, or the rock bags, whatever they are right there. Grab those. Alright, and we should be clear now. I think that's everyone that's in this area to start with. So... One thing you're going to want to make sure you have here is a grenade of some kind. Having a heavy grenade here is really nice. If you don't have one, try to craft one. Bear in mind, you need shotgun shells for the next section. Um, f at least four, but having around seven or eight is, is useful. So, you know, you've probably just picked up a bunch of gunpowder. You, you should be able to craft some. If you can craft a heavy grenade... That's even better, and a flash grenade as well. Flash grenade and a heavy grenade for this next part. I kind of what you want to use. Have the shotgun ready here just to shoot anyone that's in your way. This guy can back up straight for the ladder. You don't have to kill him, but just be ready. I like to use a heavy grenade for this part. If you've got two flashbangs, that will work, but you're going to need one more, no, two more flashbangs after this section. So if you're using two here, bear in mind you're going to need four in total. All right, here goes my flashbang. I've also got one more large resource to make another one. And I'm going to have to visit the merchant to get another large resource. Okay. Right. Running away from that guy. That flashbang just kind of stuns everyone up, allows us to exit. Let's go ahead and make this flash. This is for, we need to make this for this next part with the bugs. Not completely necessary, but it just makes it much, much safer. Usually in this bug section, the bugs will just grab you. More or less straight away after the cutscene here. So, skip the cutscene, chuck your flashbang, shoot this one bug to the right, he usually doesn't get stunned, and then you should be able to just run through this area. Oh, the uh, flashbangs actually work really well against the bugs. They keep them stunned for so long. Just gives you lots and lots of time to get through here. What the? All right, ducking down here. Around all of this, using the wheel. Okay. Nearly done with this chapter. A good chunk of this chapter is Leon walking with Ashley, which is kind of annoying. So we duck under all these bags. We can stand up and run around these ones. And break these two boxes. This one and this one. Beware of the one with the viper in it. And there's a grenade right there if you want it. Although to be honest we don't have a huge use for it right now. Not really much we can do with that. Unless you're not going to do the skip that I'm going to do in the next section. With the turrets. Another one of those cheeky turret skips. This one's a little bit easier to pull off though. Alright. So all the way back we can take this route. That's why we smash those boxes so we can get back through here. Leon squeezes through a really small gap in the door there. In chapter 2, it has to be so much higher up than that. Okay, so large resource, small resource. You can buy another large one here if you need to. You will need at least one flashbang for this next section. Shotgun shells also very useful. Right, I got the magnum here. I'm just going to use it to take out this bug. Again, you can use a shotgun for that if you want to. Switch to the pistol. Shoot the bear trap. You can use anything to take out that bear trap or just avoid it. Shotgun this bug. Get rid of him. When you come, stop about here next to the bear trap. Shoot this bug. Get ready with the magnum. We need to look up and take out this guy that's on the balcony with the RPG because he's just kind of annoying. So when you get to the top of these stairs, throw your flashbang all the way up here towards this roof. And then come here with the shotgun. Wait about here by this concrete barricade. And you want to shoot this guy in like the toes. So you're barely clipping him. And then run past him on the left and you can get past the turret. Duck behind this turret for a second just to check you're not being shot at. I actually played it kind of unsafe here because the, the uh, pig guy 
was still shooting at me and that can still hit you from really far away. If you want to wait that out, I don't blame you. That strategy, that trick can be a little bit overbearing at first, but just, you know, a little bit of practice and you got this. If you've got saves left, you can save it before that whole ordeal of the merchant as well. Um, hopefully your saves are going well right now. Before that little fight, though, is a good place to save it, to be honest. And I didn't mention before, actually. I forgot to mention that saving before the Krauser fight is also definitely recommended. There's a lot of saves that you can skip, though, like the forklift one. Everyone used to save before the forklift stuff, but I feel like it's not really necessary with the heavy grenade strap. So if you saw me spamming pause there, that's a... A little trick called pause buffering and it can sort of force the game to do weird things like Leon sort of presses himself against the wall there and rests for a second sometimes I'm not quite sure how it works but uh, you can make the game skip Leon sort of pressing into the wall by spamming the pause button he'll just he just won't do it and he'll just go left kind of a cool little trick but uh, didn't work for me there Really, we're not in any danger here at all. All that would do is just save a little bit of time on the game timer. And obviously pausing it doesn't increase the game's time. You'll see another example of it here. Leon gets to a certain point in this area and he sort of stops and tries to pick up Ashley a little bit more and coughs and that costs like 5-10 seconds. But you'll see me doing it here. I spam the pause button and it, it doesn't happen. Like he just doesn't do it. Kind of a cheeky little trick. It stops him from doing it. And uh, yeah, we can go ahead and... Save Ashley! One more chapter to go, and this is a really short one. Like, I think six minutes or something like that. Let's get it done. This chapter was definitely a tough one to figure out no damage. I think... Chapter 6, Chapter 11, Chapter 15 uh, are probably the hardest to do. Just because of that trick at the end. Okay, so one more to go. Let's get it done then. Let's get it finished. Okay, final countdown then. Let's go. All of this. Removing the parasites. This was the week. There is loot in this area, but... We do not need it. Thanks to him. Let's just get out of here. Get this finished. The amount of work that went into this run was insane. It took me a very long time. Most of the no damage runners that I've seen are going for 100% no damage. They're a lot longer than this run. Although I'm sure plenty of people will do this run. It's definitely something that's going to get done, and I'm sure people will do it way faster than me in the future. Someone probably already has, but uh, yeah, I'm really proud of this run. It was it was very difficult to get done. Really happy with it. it took me a long time, but I got three bugs to deal with in this chapter. There was one of them, and there's two more ahead of us. I'll have. Way more no damage Resident Evil stuff coming very soon. I definitely want to do more of it. Although I might speedrun this game mode for a little bit, like this professional mode. Just because the speedrun's coming a long way and I'll be interested to see what I can do with it. I might soon post a speedrun explained Hello, guide for this Welcome. category as well. Alright, so we can sell Luis's key. Why not? And we just want a rocket launcher. We've got tons of money. We can sell... All of the treasures if we want to, but I just ended up not bothering. If you need extra money, go ahead. You can sell your weapons if you need to for another rocket launcher. So all we do here is shoot Saddler. He's going to jump down. We can skip the cutscene. And pretty much now we just need to shoot him. I'm not sure if you can do enough damage to him here to make Ada throw you the rocket launcher faster, or if it even matters. You're kind of just like waiting it out. I know if you have the infinite rocket launcher, you can just shoot him and it ends. But, uh, yeah. 
I think, I don't know if this is on a timer or you can do a certain amount of damage to him for Ada to drop you stuff. I kind of just emptied everything I had or could into him anyway. Pretty much you just want to run to the sides of some of these tentacles and just evade the others. Really straightforward. There's Ada and your mate. I was in a really weird position here. I was kind of looking at the floor or something. It was strange. Yeah, there we go. Have one of them. And now all we got to do is escape. So, uh, if you have followed this guide and you've got this far, you're more or less done, man. You just got to get, get out. Get on the jet ski. If you just watch him for fun and you've just watched this video, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for staying to the end. Although, you know, you might want to stay tuned to watch the results. Don't want to miss that. Actually prove to you I didn't take any damage anywhere. We're not out of here and this yet. was an S-plus run. You see the time and all that good stuff. I don't want to cut that out from my run. It's kind of half the fun, man. All right. I was really happy that this run ended up being under four hours. Video will probably be just over that because, like I said, intros and outros, menu time, stuff like that. But yeah, on the timer it was, I think it was like 3 hours 55. Which isn't bad. Someone else had done this run, and I think it was just over 5 hours. My previous professional run was just over 5 hours as well, and that was like the guide I made. That was like my first run of professional though, and I didn't look up any tricks for that, or like anyone else's advice, except for um, the golden eggs. That was it. There's a lot more tricks in this one, like a ton more. I've learned from a lot of different people. I do know quite a few speedrunners in the community though, which is kind of cool. Alright, so if you go at full speed throughout the jet ski section, you'll end up uh, with about 15 seconds to spare or so. So you want to go pretty quick for a heal. I was kind of clenched at this point because if, if I bumped the jet ski, I would have to go back to the beginning of the chapter. I did want to get through about damage in the jet ski. Also, if you press your interact button here, you can do flips. I don't know if most of you probably already know that. But uh, yeah, you get, also get a thousand pesetas for every flip you do, which is kind of stupid, but <laughs> a nice touch, I guess. So you get 3,000, 4,000 pesetas just for going through the section, pretty much. Um, but yeah, this run has been very difficult. Probably the hardest no damage run I've done in a while. I think the only run I can think of no damage wise that compares to this one that I've done, even segmented, uh, is probably No Way Out, which is uh, a Resident Evil run. Although I recently no damaged Dead Space, which was really fun. Enjoyed doing the Dead Space Impossible run. And I, I want to do some more Resident Evil no damage stuff because I really haven't done a lot of it. But either way, there we go. That's the end. We made it. Happy days. I was very relieved to get that done. If you've stuck with me to the end, I appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. It really means a lot that you'd stick around. I put a ton of work into these videos, so you guys watching makes it really worthwhile. Um, if you want to support me, just subscribe to the channel, maybe. Like the video, comment, all that good stuff. Let me know what you thought. If you want to support me a bit further, you can always come on over to my Twitch, like I mentioned before. That link will be in the comment section below this video. So, uh, yeah, all the no damage is there. You can see all my results. All of them zero on times damage at the bottom, which is great. Really happy. Happy with that run. Let me know what you thought. Um, or anything you struggled with. If you're doing this yourself, or you've just gone for your S+, plus and this helped you. I love reading uh, success stories. But again, thank you very much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day. And until next time, take it easy.